Maybe inside of here, you think you're a boss though? Yeah, maybe you're a boss. Yeah, of course. I thought about that one year ago. Hey, sir. Thanks. You're looking good with that stick, I'm not a liar. I wanted to. It's called a lacrosse. It's called a lacrosse. I thought he looked a little out of sorts. I got to do what that is. Yeah, I'm going to do one practice a week and then game days. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. And now, and now, always, always doing that. Yeah, I might honestly not even do the practice. <laughs> the first half of the game was practice, and then what age is It's one more practice than everyone else. You're a men's league? I said last year, but I played for this year. I don't mind, so I was like, you know, why not? I played a little bit. Hey, as long as you get swag, it doesn't really matter. Right? <laughs> I think I got stuff last year, but I didn't play, so. Here's a prime example. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, you know, it's all about swag. Uh, I did this um, survey alumni game. Right? And where the guy got hurt. Where the guy got hurt within like two minutes of the game. Just people are already expecting that. Uh, 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 his kneecap was over here. Oh, he was on my. He was. He was. He went one way and his knee was the other way. What did he look like? Huh? What did he look like? Uh, uh, young kid. Uh, there we go. Uh, probably about five, ten, six feet, real thin. Yeah. I got a very young kid. Little bit of beard. Yeah. Little bit of beard. Stubborn, was like he you. Was he fit? Huh? Was he fit? Yeah, he was pretty He wasn't the heavy set guy. He wasn't the heavy set guy. He was the thinner guy. Yeah. The uh, heavy set guy worked the first half. He, he came in the second half. Too. But as soon as he first shot on goal, he just went one way to the other side. But he had blown out before, so, but it was his other knee that went out. So they called medics, medics took him away. Yeah, he's holding his old kneecap with one side. Really? Is that the first time that happened? Uh, no, he, he, he says he got on his shoulder twice, his other kneecap. So the reason I ask is because most of us guys who have him now. Yeah, he put it on his Yeah, this guy, when he went down, that's what he wanted. So he came out trying to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, all right, let's go and get started, guys. Good evening, how are you? It's good to see you. Welcome to session four this uh, January 9th. How many of you are really disappointed that you didn't have to run in the rain and do the physical <laughs> instead? That's all right. You're just going to get your chance. It's just been postponed. It hasn't been canceled. It's been postponed. So when we were going to have the makeup anyway, which will be the next meeting that we'll have in February on the 13th. So we'll have just one location then. It'll be here at Columbus Tustin Middle School in Tustin. Uh, and yeah, and then we'll be able to do that at 5. And then at 6, we'll start the, the last training session before the high school season. That's when we'll go over the three-man mechanics. Uh, if you guys are still working on two-man mechanics, you're still welcome to stay for the training after you come to the, um, the PFT at, the, at that time. So here's some more important, speaking of important and upcoming uh, training dates, uh, the next thing we've got coming up is, uh, well, the fitness test is supposed to be today. Um, 118 is the NILOA meeting. Uh, that one's mandatory for NILOA members, but if you'd like to come, maybe you need to make up some training hours or you just want to see what it's like, uh, you can uh, audit the training. Just let us email and let us know, and we'll make accommodations for you. That one's going to be, that's a, that's a Thursday night, 7 o'clock, and it's at Windward High School in L.A. That's a little ways away. Uh, let's see, it's 120, but they did that to accommodate us because we were going to have it on the 20th, which didn't make a lot of sense for us because on the 20th, that starts our youth season. So if you're looking to finally get out there and get on the field, that's not going to be till, uh, as the earliest it would be is the 20th. We still don't have a schedule. We don't know what it's going to look like. I can't say, oh, everyone's going to get games that day and we're going to have our level one trainings uh, where you get to do the um, all you new guys that are brand new, never rep before, you get to do uh, shadowing. And that, that involves, you'll, you'll go out there on the field and you'll follow another official behind them, kind of little ducklings as you go back and forth up and down the field. Uh, you'll do that for a couple games, um, get your feet wet a little bit in that, and then they'll reverse it and then they'll shadow you to help you go back and forth on the field. Uh, hopefully we can start that the 20th, uh, if not maybe the following weekend, uh, we'll see. The next weekend, also that same day, is the Cal's Pro Sports Tournament. Do you have any more info on that? Have you heard uh, anything? It's, it's going to be pretty small. It's two. Uh, it's one day, two fields for maybe six hours. So one long. day, two fields for six hours. Okay, we're still trying to do a three-man training on that, right? That's the goal, yeah. Yeah. So the goal of that one, uh, so the youth season will start on the 20th, but also the same day we have uh, a tournament. It's just Saturday. Yeah. Know, so yeah. yeah. Just on Saturday, we're going to try and do a three-man uh, tournament or three-man training event, <laughs> so you'll get to do your training for three-man, and it'll be a great opportunity because there's some high school games and uh, the levels are somewhere not too high, not too low, somewhere in between. So it'll be a good starting point for some of you uh, that need some training, and also you can get your evaluations done possibly, or uh, we'll see. Uh, 27, 28. The next weekend is the Air Station Shootout. And that was the big tournament they got rained out last year. So uh, they've, they've made accommodations this year, so that won't happen again. And hopefully, uh, I've heard rumors that the Orange County Grid Park will be finished, all the, the major fields, uh, by this tournament. So we'll see uh, if, if that actually happened. And that's as many, I think, it's, I heard 20. There might even be, uh, I don't know if we're going to use all 20, but I, I know that a lot of the fields are complete. Uh, pretty soon that'll be a great venue and there'll be lots and lots and lots of teams. Um, so that'll be, that'll be cool. Then the Crush Challenge uh, tournament is going to be also at the Orange County Great Park. It's not going to be at uh, Foothill and various little schools all over the place anymore. Um, which is good. Uh, it's still, it'll be run by SoCal Express, the same people that do the air station shootout. And that's going to be, it's not, it's the weekend before President's Day weekend. 
So it's the second weekend of February. So it's the day before Valentine's Sort of. Uh, 10th and 11th. So fitness test makeup, that'll be the 13th, uh, the weekend after the challenge, or the Tuesday after the ch cross challenge, and then the day before that, the fitness test is the day before Valentine's Day. And then session uh, six will follow right after that on that Tuesday. And then the youth season is supposed to end about uh, 310, March 10th is the last day for that. But don't worry, it starts up again uh, in April, and it goes from April to very early May, which uh, will mark the end of the high school season. So the CIF uh, high school season will start uh, somewhere in between right there. I think it's the last weekend in February, and then the CIF playoffs are always the first weekend in, uh, in May. Okay, so somewhere in there we'll have a, we'll have a party or two, uh, you know, get together that we can uh, celebrate, especially the end of the year. And then also this year the uh, Pacific Coast Lacrosse Shootout, if you don't know what that is, that's the big Division One game that's played in Southern California. This year it's uh, Maryland, right? No. Maryland, North Carolina. Championship. Yeah, right. Maryland, Maryland, North Carolina. Maryland, North Carolina. Last two champions. Last okay. two years. In, a, in different year. years, but yeah, yeah the last the two previous winners <laughs> are coming out. Uh, that'll be an exciting game. It starts at seven, and you can get there uh, much earlier. We also, or last year, we had a booth there, kind of like a, um, you know, become a ref sort of thing, where we attracted uh, a few people. So maybe this year we'll attract a little more. Um, it's also a way for us to fulfill our uh, nonprofit status of letting people know about the rules. We have little flyers we hand out. And stuff like that. Uh, also, at that, he really wants everyone to attend. And so in attending, uh, as an official, you can get a special discount. And, but then also, um, he wants to put us on the field. So he, he, uh, so GW wants, the guy who puts it together, he wants to put us actually on the field uh, in, field in the box. Not, not like all of us, but like he's going to set up some chairs in the box area, and he wants you to get the full brunt of their yelling and screaming <laughs> and see how it goes back and forth and see how quickly it goes. Because you can't – it's one thing when you're standing up and you're looking out from above, but when you're actually on the field in the middle of it. We could probably get some guys to work it too. Like I know last year, like my, my dad announces it if you guys didn't know, and usually we have guys like – we'll put together guys who like time – we do the penalty clocks. Uh, on timing I did that and writing down the writing down penalty times and you know you, you know you know you have the graduate assistant guy who's parking at you every five yeah. seconds that's right. how much it was, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah we, we've got the connections you can get paid to work on the field uh, you can also just leisurely sit there um, and uh, we'll probably rotate that around a little bit maybe you'll rotate from working the booth to going over and <coughs> Uh, hanging out on the field and then you know some free time and doing that uh, it's a good time so make sure you mark your calendars for that on the 24th at 7 p.m. it's probably when did it that when did it open last year like when we first got it was like three or four o'clock yeah yeah they came they came over early to train and they had the field to train to do, to do their warm-ups and yeah. stuff and then they went to the locker room and the other team came showed up and then and then all the vendors and stuff, which we <coughs> have our booth with, they open as early as I think three or four. Yeah, I was there around three. Yeah, you have to wait till the Several squat hours. meet leaves before you get in. That's <laughs> true. But <laughs> anyway, it's a good event. Make sure you mark that down. Also, uh, fitness testing. Can you scroll down. I reverse it. So do the. Scroll down. Yeah, it's on the side. It's in the bar. It's just on the side. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so on the fifth, um, next time we have the fitness test, come ready to run at 5 p.m. Uh, so we're, you know, some running clothes. Tests will be conducted on the track and field on that campus over there. Uh, make sure you wear running attire, bring a water bottle for hydration afterwards. Uh, let's see, I don't recommend using the water fountain and all the diseases it carries. Um, 
And also, if you want to know more about the, the activities, uh, oh, make sure you look in the handbook. If you look in the handbook, you'll see all of the things that we'll be doing. It's basically, you start. we're going to do it a little different this year. Everyone's got to do it in the same order. So we'll start off with the 12 minute run, or the 10 minute run, I don't know. 12. 12 minute run, and it's how many laps you can go <laughs> back and forth, or fractions of a lap once you, you know, once you finish your freeze, or once the time runs out. And then you measure how many laps you did. Okay, and then after that, we've got a pro agility. Uh, it's like a cone drill, a box drill. You kind of run, sidestep, back, sidestep, uh, back pedal, that sort of thing, and back. And then the last thing you end up with is a shuttle run where you're going there, back, there, back, there, back, sort of thing. All the details are on there. Don't forget the rules test. How many of you got your rules book? Okay, should have come in the mail last week. With your U.S. Lacrosse magazine, look at the U.S. Lacrosse magazine. It should have been covered in plastic and have the rules book in it. If not, you need to call uh, U.S. Lacrosse and make sure that you um, have your thing up to date, your membership, and that they're going to send you that that rule book. If, they, if it's on their fault, if you know if the fault's on their end, then hopefully that'll light a fire underneath them to make sure that they actually get this far west and they don't just go to the east coast. Okay, uh, new members exam. Remember, if you're a new member, you need to make sure you take that test. It's due January 17th. Um, that's just a way for us to make you read that handbook that we keep talking about. Uh, we don't print it out for you because it's like 70 pages long, um, but it's it's quick read. Uh, yeah, all you have to do is go through that in one screen and then the other one take the test. Many of you still need to also don't forget your makeup training hours. We'll be sending that more often to remind you guys, at least uh, maybe once or twice a week, uh, that you need to finish those hours and get those. If something doesn't make sense or whatever, please email me and let me know. Or if I'm missing something, uh, it, it is entirely possible. Uh, there's a lot of heat track, and when I press the print button, and it sends out all those emails automatically. You know, if, if I've got one check mark in the one box in the wrong place, it could ruin it for somebody. Yeah. So the youth test is no longer required. Yeah, the youth test is no longer required because um, we were just talking to. The youth league, they don't even they don't use it anymore. They don't, they're not even close to following it anymore. So we're, they're encouraging them to make it just pretty much all NFHS rules with the few basic modifications we're all used to, like no one-headed stick checks, uh, no over and backing counts for the B division. Uh, the other one does. Um, and then and then it should have all the other new rules and stuff, like you can go in and out of the box if there's a flag down and you didn't lose possession or anything. Yes? Uh, if you do do it, is it, come, is it uh, make up hours? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. You get one hour credit for doing that. Thing. And how many hours do you have to do the actual test? The actual test is uh, two, and then if you do the assignment with it, that's two more, and if you do the youth rules, it's one. Um, yeah, so that's all on that uh, email I sent about makeup hours. You can also look it up on the website. Yeah. How many is getting the three for the test? Three for the test. Wow. Kind of standing up for the people. <laughs> <laughs> three for the test, huh? It took us three hours. Okay, Sean, you're even wearing soccer shoes today, so I don't mean this must be one of those days. <laughs> Thanks. I, I wore these for coaching my daughter. and then. Uh, that was a year, so I still have them. All right, so any other questions about the training? You need to know. Okay, so we'll keep finishing that. When's the last, when's it all due? 17th. 17th, because assignments come out the 20th, and if you don't have it by the 17th, then I'm going to tell Ojan to take all your games away. Bueno. You'll have to, to get it all. <laughs> He's like, you're right. <laughs> okay. All right, so. All right. For, for what? Sport? Uh, that, for which one? For, uh, Not lacrosse, right? <coughs> okay, that one's the other one is in, if you go straight there, it's on the left, that really in the left. I'm in the wrong class. <laughs> I, I read the schedule, so I know there. I think it's baseball coaches. Um, okay. All right, so without further ado, we're still waiting for Steve to come, so we'll just. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. We're gonna, I'll go and get started. Go ahead and flip, let's flip over to the next one. All right, take 20 seconds to tell your neighbor how well you're doing on your makeup hours and how you plan on fixing that. Imagine, 
Yeah, Okay, guys, let's jump on in. Okay, so real quickly, I'm going to go over some, it's called new adult officials, but that doesn't mean that if you're not a new adult official that you won't get anything out of this. It's just, base, it's got some basic things that we'll expound upon a little bit. So, some basic stuff we'll expound upon a little bit to give you some more insight, but also uh, get to keep the basics as well. In this one, we're going to, can you go ahead and click uh, something on the side? There you go. I got it. Okay, so we're talking about pregame responsibilities, how to look professional, okay? How to fix mistakes and how to effectively manage conduct. Here's our responsibilities. <laughs> pregame responsibilities. Umpire, field judge, contact the referee. Look at that, even U.S. lacrosse from it, represents it. Okay, that's just means you can just send an email or text or whatever. Uh, to the person, hey, usually, you know, email is fine, but also, you know, if you feel comfortable, text or if you have it, the you know, phone number. Uh, just say, hey, 
just checking in. What you know? What do you want to? What do you want to meet tomorrow? What do you you know? What are we gonna wear? Because sometimes you know, is it wear the purple hat or wear the purple or the purple shirt, the the line shirt or the line shirt with purple in it. Okay, you gotta decide that uh, ahead of time. And then also, 30 minutes prior to game is when you arrive. Make sure that you have the same uniform, but you've already talked about that the night before. You also make sure that you go over the rules. You know, okay, what's the special rules for today? We're doing the youth thing. What was that extra thing we need to do? Okay, it's a good idea to have that in your bag, a copy of it. Uh, you just put it in your little bag that we remember I showed you the second week. Uh, the, the different many things you can have inside your bag. Print out a copy of the rules. We'll give it to you once we have it uh, for the year. So have that printed out in there in your bag. Uh, make sure you only read it though, like in the car, or if you have to read it on the field, make sure no one else sees that you have it, because then they're going to always ask you for it, or be like, I saw you reading it beforehand, like, don't you know what you're doing? Okay, that sort of thing. And don't bring, your, don't ever bring your rule book out with you, uh, either. Okay, why would you not want to bring the rule book out? Because you don't know the rules by your reading. <laughs> there's there's a smart aleck remarks, but also can a coach? There's something in coach uh, NFHS rules where you can the coach can challenge the ruling on the field. Okay, you don't want to be in a situation where he's like he's like, hey, let me see your rule book. I saw you with it. Let me see the rule book. Okay, and then you get into this little debate over it. Okay, you put the rule book in the car, and now you're the authority. If they're going to ask you, then you're going to have to say, no, coach, where's your rule book? You're supposed to have it with you. Okay, which he is, and of course he doesn't know that. I tell the coaches every year that they should bring it. Why? But sometimes they forget, or they just don't have one. <laughs> they don't bother to get one. Okay, but they swear that they they don't they don't know the rules, but they do know how to complain. Okay, point of emphasis uh, review. That's a good thing to go over every year. The point of emphasis, uh, you know, the things those are things like, hey, we're watching high hits this year, or remember. Uh, you know, this year I'm sure it's the mouthpieces. Make sure the mouthpieces are not inside the mouth. No They're hooks. completely in the mouth. No fish hooking as they... And all, I still saw it last weekend. Was anyone else frustrated by that? Like, yeah. I don't get it. They're still... <laughs> still <laughs> frustrated by it. Uh, also, double check your gear. Make sure that your battery works on your timer. Okay, I always see people put it in. Once you click it on there, make sure you, you test it. Okay, it's always funny because then it goes off and then everybody's like, is it me, is it me, is it you, is it you? <laughs> oh, no, it's me. Okay, no, oh, it's my backup one in, the, in, the, in my bag. Okay, make sure, that, make sure that you have a backup one as well. That's something you need to invest in as you go on. Um, oh, there we go. So oh, also make sure you have another whistle. I've had whistles break in the middle of the game before. Uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to wear uh, a, one around my neck and I just put it inside my shirt. Uh, I've never had to use it. I think that'd be kind of awkward if I had to. I like to pull it out. And then, but it's a much better than if you've ever. Has anyone gone on the field without a whistle? And then what happens in the first? <laughs> and then all of a sudden the ball goes out of bounds and I actually went like this. <laughs> I like punch myself in the face. And I was like, oh, geez, you feel so stupid. You're like, stop, stop. Okay, so don't be that guy. Make sure you have your whistle around your neck. Oh, you know, an extra one or another one in your pocket if you can do that. I can't have extra things in my pocket. I hate running like that. Okay, also, it's a good idea to have two pairs of flags. Not so much, you know, like you're going to lose a flag during the game, but in case your partner forgets theirs. Okay, or it gets lost somehow and you only have one. Uh, those are some good things to have. And then 20 minutes before the game, you know, you should be out on the field. So, thir sorry, 30 minutes is, notice they're in the, are they in the parking lot? No, they're just either in the parking lot or just meeting outside the field. Then by 20 minutes, you make sure you're seen on the field. It's, it's one thing to be in the parking lot and, like, talking. and you're, I know you're doing the job, but it doesn't help the people running the, the, the games or the coaches or whoever, whoever's hosting it if you're not out there being seen and if they have the, you know, the sense of security knowing, oh, okay, they're here, they're just, you know, they're not just somewhere else. Okay, that would be a great time to make sure you check the field. Uh, that must be a divot. Okay, check the field. Um, I know when I first started officiating, they told us that we had to, uh, the referee would come and we'd actually jog around the field. Take a little jog, talk. Have our presence known, but what we're doing when we're jogging, walking around the field, is making sure that 
making sure that the field is uh, safe, you know. You'd be amazed what you find when you just go to one corner of the field and you're like, oh, look, there is a giant sprinkler. Or there's no actual, <laughs> there's actually a light post right next to the corner, not five yards, at least six yards away like it's supposed to be. Okay, also you might find a hole in the net. Or something like that, they, it's a lot easier to have them, you know, it's not our job to fix it, but I know some referees carry uh, zip ties because they'd rather do that than have to go ask the coach and, you know, make it look like it's our fault because they don't have their zip ties and they're not fixing their field. Uh, the other thing is having the coach's certification card. The coach's certification card is, uh, you know, you put the names of the officials on there and the date and period on the back, it's got their a, um, a certification, you know, are your players are legally equipped to play by rule. And then that explains what exactly that is. It's kind of transferring the responsibility from you onto the coaches as to whether their kids are safe to be out there. Where um, do you get those parts on the website? You have USA Lacrosse website, you can be down some other places. Yeah, you can buy these. I know I get them sent to me in the mail. Um, you can order them from the US Lacrosse website, or I think for high school, we talked about, did we talk about printing a special one for us with the website on it? That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. We, we talked about our uh, a couple more meetings ago. For the high school season, we want to print out one. Uh, East of Wade does it. Uh, or did it. Where it's got all this information, then it's also got the, the website that they can go to if they have any questions or um, constructive feedback that they'd like to get. Okay. Uh, the other thing you need to do is make sure that you talk to the table personnel. This is like my least favorite thing about going in and doing, especially a youth game, because you get to go there and train someone every single game, every single time on how to use the table. Okay. So come up with a spiel. Come up with a, what you can say. Um, you could also, I know some people uh, print out the timer rules and things like that. As a little reminder for them, some people even I've seen people uh, laminate it and then break it, you know, <laughs> and they have it out there because it's real easy. You just hand it to them, like you know, it's got it's a nice reference for them. Reference for them. That's the first time anyone's ever taught them actually how to do it. Uh, it's not our job to teach them, but it becomes our job if the coaches don't prepare them. So what does that tell you? It's really our job. Okay, so that's something uh, you want to make sure you do because the more you've got them understanding what they're doing, the less problems that, that comes out of it, but then also the smoother the game goes and the more pleasant the spirit experience is for you. Okay, you're out there, um, you know, we're not committing a whole lot of hours outside of the game like the coaches and players are, but we are, you know, we're, we still got to be there for a long time and do our work job, and so let's make sure that we're we're doing it right, but also making it easier for ourselves and the next crew that comes after us. The better we, we take turns training these people, hopefully they come back the next week and do it again. They're like, oh, that person already told me. Like, oh, phew, thank you. <laughs> thank goodness Gino was with me every week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then also that's a, <laughs> I've never done this in a youth game, but in some high school games and college games, I before the game, They'll say, Coach, we're available for stick checks, and the kids will actually come before the game. Has anyone had a kid to ask you before a game to measure their stick to check it? Okay, but not in a high school game? No, in a youth game before? Okay. But he was like, Did you actually measure the length of it? And you're like, Yeah, but he was through 10 and he grew, and not supposed to use it. Oh. <laughs> so you so said no. And he was like, I asked you before the game, I was trying to be a good person. I'm like, you know, like, sorry, it's the game. Okay. Okay, so that's something, this is more pregame activities that you can expect to do. Again, the referees should bring you through these things, but some of the referees are in here, so they're, they're also getting it at the same time. Uh, ask the coach. Uh, this is, yeah, if and when we're having a national anthem. That's more of a high school game. Uh, but sometimes, you know, there might be a special youth game or tournament or it's a playoff or something that might be part of it. Uh, also, player introductions, that's typically, again, a high school game, but you never know. It depends on where you go. Uh, and then if there, <laughs> there's a halftime ceremony. Okay, these are some things that, to ask. I usually, when I write an email to the coaches before 
uh, especially a high school game, I'll ask certain things like more towards the end. This is more like um, senior day. That's a typical high school thing where that, that could take up some time either before or, you know, uh, during the middle of the game at halftime or sometimes I, they have it after. Uh, okay, then finally, five minutes before the game starts, you should have all the captains out there and you're doing the what? Coin toss. Coin toss. Okay, we've got uh, baseball? Yeah. Yeah, that's in the MPR. What's that? Just the next building. Sorry, the multi purpose room is down the hall into the left. It's behind the cafeteria right there. Okay, yeah, we should put the Sokolowa sign there. They won't even know what it is. What it like? But then they'll know it doesn't say baseball. <laughs> Most of the baseball students baseball can't read. <laughs> I think it's like sort of not baseball. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's right with a, with a red. <laughs> hey, there's a marker in there, put not baseball on the back. And then every year, guys will see it and they'll say, not baseball. Why does it always say that? <laughs> okay, so make sure you coin the toss. The only thing I have to say about the coin toss is you flip it in the air and then you do what? No, catch it. You catch it. If you're in football, you let it hit the ground, which I think it's always weird when you watch it on TV. It's much easier to flip it and then catch it and then show it. I don't, I don't turn it over again. Does anyone turn it over again? I don't think you're supposed to, right? I just flip it and catch it like that. And then <laughs> it's really embarrassing when you forget what the kid said and you just hold it out there waiting for them to. <laughs> Did you win? <laughs> Why, before you do it, you ask the other team, what did he say? Yeah. Right, but I still, I've still done that. Like, it's, I don't know, it's been a rough day at work or something, and I'll, I'll do it, and then I still hold it. And it's like the time where the ball goes out of bounds, and you don't, you really didn't see who did it, and you just wait for a kid to pick it up, and then you point, and then blow the whistle, like, no one's complaining, right? Let's go with the clue. Or you just wait for a very... A very uh, righteous sounding uh, complaint from the coach. You're like, I kind of trust you. Okay, you're right. Oh, I'm sorry, coach. You're right. It's why I pointed the wrong way. Okay, and then, uh, no, what does it say? No whistles? No whistles. Right, okay. Good Good point. So before that, usually the first, what we want to do, our goal is our first whistle from us is supposed to be the first uh, face off of the game. Uh, I know coaches have other whistles and other things. You want it to be, you know, and so they're kind of, they may be whistling before the game. So there's going to be a lot of whistles going on. We want to make sure that the whistle that comes from us is the first one. Uh, so to do that, all you just do is you go over and you announce and say, I need captains. Your referee will tell you, hey, uh, you got the visiting team. Go grab the visiting team captains. Uh, we, don't, we don't typically do this in youth, though, right? No, but it's probably good to have the guys know what we do. So you. Yeah. Typically, the, the referee gets the home team right by, right by the wing area, the umpire gets the away team by the, by the wing area, and then the, the home team usually comes out first, followed by the away team, and then the home team is facing the bench, the away team is facing away towards the fans. Right. They went over that last week, right, for the mechanics? How you line up for the face-off? Yeah. It was about three quarters of the way through. Okay. That's always good to go. Touched it. Click on this one. Yeah, all right, referee speaks. <laughs> it's okay. Referee speaks. Uh, yeah, I'm, I know some people are like, and this is my partner, do you have anything to say? And then what are you supposed to say when he says that? No, nope, let's play ball. Or whatever. I don't know why. That's why I don't ever say it. Uh, yeah, fair. It's very fun to say. Okay. Uh, then make sure you've got the lineup. The two teams should be out there with their left, left shoulder to the goal they're defending. So this should be the left goalie. He should be defending this foreground goal. And then the background goal should be that goalie right there. Who's in the middle? Face-off. Face -off. The guy who runs the face-off. He should have his feet straddling the line. And then I usually just say that. Right? Goalie on this end, attack on this end. Face-off guy, you're straddling the line. Everyone else. Because uh, they, they always like kind of either want to bunch to one side or the other. It's like, no, guys, it's like two and a half yards this way, two and a half yards this way. Because you don't do it at the youth level. They're not trained. <laughs> They're not trained. They're not trained a lot of things. Okay. They still, I still had high schools that didn't know you had to take the ball outside the box to restart it and stuff like that. 
Ah, crazy. Okay, uniform and equipment. Are you clicking on stuff? There we go. Uh, partners will match. Make sure you use the appropriate whatever your partner decides on. Typically, though, you wear a black and white high tack, a one inch striped shirt, black undershirt, black shorts, black belt. With this. Never seen this before. Silver buckle. Silver buckle. Anyone have a gold buckle? You gotta get rid of those. Okay, silver buckle, uh, black ankle socks. They should be quarter cut. Um, typically, we use the Nike ones. I don't know the model number. They're from San Diego, you know the. Oh, I okay. look it up. <laughs> <laughs> the black and the black shoes. Um, they, need, they need to be all black. So you get I those. I the face with the gray. Some of the. Some of the, the ones that are on sale right now that are pretty good are the Reebok uh, Zig Magistrate or the Zig Pulse um, shoes. You can see those. There's a lot of different options for black shoes, black referee shoes that you can look on there. Uh, everyone has their preference on things like that, but just know uh, you probably don't want to wear cleats. I haven't worn I wore cleats when I first started because that's I was still playing, but um, I found that I just use black shoes now and it works just fine. All right, so make sure you have all your required equipment. Every game, you need to make sure you have your tape measure, the whistle, your two flags, uh, the 30 second timer, or 20 second timer, and then, oh, the new lacrosse scorecard. Okay, we've got some of those if you don't have it yet. Um, you can write on it, or I like to use the disposable ones so you have that record with you. Um, it's easier to write on if you've got to report something later, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, plus, I don't like wiping it and then having to redo it. It's always a mess. Okay, mistakes by officials. All right, what do you never mean? happen. You will make mistakes. <laughs> you will not make a mistake. Okay, what does it say on there for the notes? It, uh, it doesn't. Does it have any notes? <laughs> Just wants to tell everyone. <laughs> Just so you know, you will make mistakes. It will happen. Uh, how you? The thing I love most about officiating. Uh, is that it really reveals who you are and <laughs> whether you're at that place where you think you are uh, as far as you know how well you handle pressure, how well, how nice a person you are, how mean a person you are, how mean you can be or how nice you can be or, or how well you can perform under pressure. And I think it's a great opportunity because as human beings, we live a pretty charmed life <laughs> in this world. We've got a lot of our needs taken care of. It's not like we're in a third world country and our safety is in jeopardy every time we leave our house. Okay, this is, we've got a pretty, you know, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cush. Okay, so when you come out on the field, it's a great way to get back into this, into the pressures of sports. The, you know, a lot of you played sports, and that's what you liked about it. You're out there, and, you know, the pressure's on. You, you're out there. People are expecting you to be a certain way and act a certain way and do your job. Okay, they can't always define that job, but they know when you do it wrong, right? Okay, they know that's not right. Okay, but... Make sure when you're out there, you're out there to uh, do your best uh, and, and be ready to, you know, admit that you can make a mistake. Don't let your pride get in the way. Uh, I see that's, that's a problem. We're, I mean, we're our men, right? Okay, it happens a lot. Uh, just know, just attack it with a different mindset. I'm out here to learn. I'm out here to do my best. I'm going to be confident that I can do it. Uh, but if I do mess up, my whole world's not going to shatter and I'm not going to freak out and, and get either... People do either two things I found. They either get really mean and they yell back and forth, or they get really quiet and don't say anything. Okay, not a whole lot in between. Okay, so, you know, see how it affects you and, and use that as a growing point as a person because this is a, a great this is a great life skill, is being able to handle situations like that, um, you know, with just with poise and, and, and confidence and knowing that you can do this and uh, I don't know how we're going to fix this, but we'll make it happen. Okay, and then, ah, okay, so <laughs> let's say you actually do make a mistake, and you realize you blew the whistle wrong, or you didn't blow the whistle wrong, or you threw a flag, or your flag's on the ground, and somebody's confused. Uh, first thing you do, stop play immediately, blow the whistle, blah, 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 blah. you just hold on, hold on. Okay, explain the mistake. Okay, so take a second. I found that... Um, after you blow the whistle, you gotta wait a second because like you really have to count like one, two, for finally everyone's kind of like, where's the whistle coming from? Okay, now we're focused on it. And then speak. 
A lot of times people will say, I, I, I messed up, but, uh, you know, this way. Okay, no one heard your explanation. They don't know what's happening. They don't even know what's going on. It's really, it's really hard to do, especially if you don't like the attention or don't think you do or it's, you're not used to it. Okay, you got to blow the whistle. You got to stop. Take a second. Make sure they're looking at you and then explain what it is that you want to say. Okay, so explain the mistake. And like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. It was a it was a loose ball push, so it's not a flag. <laughs> that would go like that, but uh, it's not a flag, or it was a loose ball push. There's no time served, or I pointed black at what it actually said. I said black, but I pointed to white. Okay, so it's actually going this way. You've got 20 seconds to sub. Go ahead and make your adjustments, coaches. Okay, if you explain like that and let them know that you're going to let them fix it. And then you're not going to just start right away. You'll get a lot, I don't want to say no complaining, but you'll get less complaining about it. Okay, so order the possession correctly. Tell everyone where the play will be restarted. Okay, actually it's going right here. It's going to be out of bounds right here. We're going this way. You know, you got 20 seconds to sub. Okay, and then we'll you know, run jog to your position where you need to be. There we go, 20 seconds to sub. And then, and then, yeah, once you see that they're doing that, then get into your proper position where you need to be. Usually this sort of thing happens when we went the wrong way or something, or, or you notice that the face-off guys are running towards their own goal. When you notice that the face-off guy picks up the ball and runs towards his own goal, why do you do that? Because you probably didn't notice that they were on the wrong side when they did their face-off. They were doing a clear back to their goal. <laughs> and it'd be really embarrassing if they scored on their own goal, goalie, which I've seen happen before. Okay, so. The goalie didn't make the pass. That's right. Okay, so uh, what if it's an inadvertent flag? You threw the flag and weren't supposed to? Okay, stop play as soon as possible. Make sure that does not interfere with an imminent scoring opportunity. Okay, so you threw a flag. And you, you throw a flag that you thought was a slash or whatever, and then the kid's about to go and score. You're like, oh, hold on, hold on. That wasn't. He goes and score. And you're like, oh, no goal. Sorry. That wasn't a flag. Now you've taken away their goal, and you've, you've taken away their flag down opportunity that they thought they had. Okay? So be aware. Um, you know, if the ball's moving, this could be this could be for anything, even this inadvertent flag or you have a player that's uh, – that's injured on the field, okay, that's always hard to deal with, right? Because parents don't understand, like, why are you still playing? Don't you care about kids? Okay, and then at the same time, the kid is nowhere near running by, and he got his scoring opportunity, you know, imminent, and then he's going to be all the way down, and, and he could actually score this if we let it happen, but, um, you know, what do you do? Do you stop the game? Uh, that's just going to take some experience and you <laughs> doing it. Typically, you 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 let in lacrosse an imminent scoring opportunity. What does that mean? A kid's running down fast break, and there's not a whole lot in between him and the goal. Okay? So it's, we typically do that in lacrosse. Also, you'll find out as you keep going, uh, the best thing to do to avoid a loose ball situation when you blow the flag is to let another team pick it up and then blow it dead. So that way that team obviously has possession. You don't have to look on your card and be like, oh my gosh, I have no idea because <laughs> I didn't write it down. Who has the alternate possession? Who's going to get the ball at? And then it's weird, especially when you know the team that committed the foul or didn't commit the foul or whatever gets the ball back. Or the kid that got injured on the play, his team doesn't get the ball back uh, because of that foul or whatever, uh, the alternate possession. Here. So make sure you know the ball is possessed, then blow it dead. Okay, so let's say it does happen, and you've uh, you fix, explain the mistake, award possession correctly, uh, tell everybody where the play restarted, and again, you know, up. Oh, and coaches, you got 20 seconds to sub. We're going, we're going this way, and then you run into you, then you wait, and then you run into your position to let everyone know that we're we're continuing the game as usual. Remember, it's better to be slow and right than to be fast and wrong. All right, so game control. What is a penalty threshold? Ooh. 
penalty threshold. Okay, so take, uh, this would be a good discussion question. In your groups, go ahead and take uh, 20 seconds. Talk about what you think is a penalty threshold and what this sentence means right here. What would be a penalty threshold? Talk it over. Agent, so you can use Oh, okay. So, in the we call it a Yeah, so that's a good a so I got the youth. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, so there's going to be a lot of You're going to be a lot of with the You're going to educate a So that's what you'll, and you'll see the you yeah. But you're going to hit him. Yeah. Just like right. you'll, you'll see the yeah. 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 Okay. All right. And we're back. So, gentlemen, let's get a let's get a quick uh, audience poll. Steve's going to come by, bring the microphone. Anyone want to volunteer? Uh, explain what you guys were talking about. Uh, what is a penalty threshold? How would you explain that to somebody? Mr. Mike. Oh, oh, that's not the same. Uh, let's give it, give it to Cody. Just talk about what you guys talked about. Attention. So we uh, looked up the definition of threshold. <laughs> Daniel would like to explain it. <laughs> so, so basically, the penalty threshold. So, you know, you're going to base that first penalty in a game off of, you know, the level of play. So say we're in a really high level varsity game and there's a brush to the helmet. You're not, you're probably going to let that go in that type of game. You know, in a lower level frosh soft game, that threshold is going to be much lower for what you are going to let go and what you're not going to let go based upon the level of play. So that brush that in that high level varsity game, the threshold for that's going to go down, and you're probably going to call that in a cross soft game as opposed to a high level varsity. Okay. Uh, do you guys, you guys understand what he's saying there? Yeah. So it's kind of like the theory is the lower the level is, to the up to the higher level, the older they get, the more physical the play gets, the more uh, prowess they have, you know, the more agility, the more ability. Um, and because of that, they're able to control their bodies a little quicker, a little faster, a little harder, but also uh, not be, well, it can be super dangerous, but uh, they, they're not as out of control or uh, volatile, I guess, in causing danger to other people. So it's like, yeah, they're moving fast, they're swinging hard, but they're under control because they've got that muscle ability. Okay, as opposed to some other kid who sees like their varsity older brother swinging that stick really hard, that kid comes in there and starts doing the same thing and he's eight years old. Is he going to have that same sort of control or with that stick or whatever? No. Okay, he's probably going to hurt somebody until he learns how to use it properly and he grows into his body and his ability. Um, so the idea by that is each level is slightly different than the one below it and the one above it. Okay, so a, a game with brand new kids that are eight years old, nine years old, versus kids that are 17, 18 years old, it's going to be a different level game. It's going to be a different threshold of what is a penalty and what isn't. Because remember, it's still a judgment call. And uh, <laughs> you'll always be told how good or bad your judgment is, even though it's not allowed according to the rules. Under um, sports, if you look on sportsmanlike conduct, it says no, uh, you know, coach or player can uh, question the judgment of an official. <laughs> That's, gosh, there'd be a penalty every game for that. Okay? <laughs> That's, why. That's why you've got to work on your threshold for that as well. But So the idea is the first, you kind of get a feel for how the game's going to be, 
how the flow, we like to call it the flow of the game is. Okay, is this going to be a fast game or is this going to be a slow game where we stop every five seconds because there's going to be a safety foul? Okay, the, you'll figure that out in the first couple minutes of the game and it may change throughout the game because things can happen. Okay, but th this whole idea is understand that we're going to start looking at fouls and they may be different depending on the level you're at. Okay, and that's just going to take some... To, I could talk about this all day, but until you actually experience it, uh, it's not something that's really going to make a whole lot of sense until you do it. Okay, so just when you go out there, for especially your first games, just know that you're going to probably be around 11, 11 12-year-olds uh, is what you'll probably start at. Uh, maybe even, yeah, 10, 10 11 year olds something like that. Uh, and that, that's about a good level for starting guys. And you'll, you'll see, like, the difference in A division and B division. Okay, because they have the B division is typically the kids that are lower, uh, brand new, and then the other ones that have some experience, they might be in the A division. Okay, so you're going to see also the, the level of coaching too, and the intensity of how they speak <laughs> will be different. Okay, so be aware of that. Uh, know that the first flag or call sets the bar. That means that if we're going to call uh, every single <laughs> by the letter uh, slash, so if a kid hits, touches the helmet with his stick, you know, we're going to call a flag on that. Okay, well, if you do that the first foul of the game, what does that mean for every foul after that? It's got to be consistent. It's got to be the same, right? It can't be inconsistent. That's the worst thing. The, you know, that's the, the, you know, that's the worst sin you could possibly think of, you know, for a referee. And it's, that's not something that you uh, can do, right? So we got to make sure that our first flag or our no call sets the bar. So whether we call it or not call it, that's something that we have to be consistent with throughout the game. All right, I'm going to do next. Sean, they're saying the screen is more blurry. The screen is blurry. I, don't, I, I think the only way I can do that is I'll stand by it. I'll try to move. It doesn't have an actual focus. It's out there. This way a little bit. Maybe that will help. Okay. So one way. Uh, Poor conduct from coach. Okay, so this is a, they call this the ramp. We call it the ladder. Okay, so I think it's on a, uh, a stair stepping system. Okay, so just imagine it's a sideways ladder. Uh, the same sort of thing is that uh, poor conduct from coaches and players. How do we deal with that? Okay, it, usually a referee is supposed to step in and help you with that, especially if you're new. But if we want to. Um, you know, it's good to know. This is how we do that. We don't just like, you know, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. Then finally, the guy just really gets into you, and then you're like, ah, you're out of here. And you throw both flags at him like this, okay? And then, you know, no, I'm only spoiling it. It's going to be four minutes. Like, you can't go past three. No, it's going to be four. So you get it. Okay? So we, we have a protocol for that. And usually, we, we call it preventative officiating. What we're going to work on is we start with the easiest, the verbal warning. Coach, I understand what you're saying. Thank you for letting me know. I like to use that a lot. Okay, I'll look into that. I'll talk to my partner about that. Okay, at the next break, uh, something to let them know. Keep an eye out for it. Well, keep an eye out for it. Uh, thank you so much uh, for letting me know. Uh, just something to acknowledge them. Okay, you can't acknowledge every single thing they say. Okay, and you shouldn't. But you got to make sure that they, because otherwise some people can't handle not being heard. You'll you'll notice that like they can't handle it at all. Okay, and if that's the case, you know, you got to warn them, coach. That's enough. I'll talk to you at the next break. You know, I, I've had one game where <laughs> my partner said to the the coach, coach, you say something every five seconds. What I need you to do is write it down, and at <laughs> halftime. I will address every single one. And by golly, that guy did it. <laughs> he had it on his phone and he wrote it. He's like, <laughs> you know, it was looked like to a parent. He's just texting someone the entire game. But he, by George, he wrote it down there the whole time. And he, and he went over every single one. And you know what he realized when he did all that? He was saying the same thing over and over and over again. And so he really realized his list was about three things. Okay, so I guess that was a learning experience for him, but also for us, you know, as a rebel, not a great, not a bad idea. Okay, if you've got that running commentary coach, that's a slash, that's, 
it's like, Coach, well, how about you tell your defense when to slide or what the defense is or what you're going to run for offense or if you have one. Um, <laughs> that sort of thing. Okay? So start with a verbal warning. Next step. They're still not getting it. It's still out of line. They're disrespecting you. Remember, it's not like other sports. Lacrosse is very respect, is by rule, <laughs> supposed to be very respectful and things like that. And if they're talking, I like to use this uh, rule of thumb. If they're talking to you in a way that they wouldn't appreciate being talked to, then you need to let them know that. Okay, because sometimes they just don't get it and they don't realize it. But it's like, sometimes I'll say, Coach, I don't really appreciate the way you're talking to me. Would you want your players to talk to you like that, what would happen if they did? You know, they might think, oh, well, they would be running. You know, like, okay, so that, go and run your car back. We'll let the team play without you. Okay, does it, can you move it over some? The next one should be conduct foul. Okay, conduct foul, I loved how they, they did this a couple years ago. They made this kind of like the, the little brother to unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay, if someone is committing an what is kind of really an unsportsmanlike conduct. They're questioning your judgment. They're drawing undue attention to themselves. That's unsportsmanlike conduct. Okay? Those sort of things are actually now fall under conduct. Okay? And the, this is a technical foul. So that's only one arm instead of two. And that means that it's only 30 seconds instead of a minute. Okay? And that's your way of taking the ball away from the coach or having another server player for 30 seconds. Now, you typically want to conveniently do this when they lose, just lose possession. So the coach is talking, he's yipping, his team has the ball, and you're like, that's it, I can't, you know, I'm done. Coach, I've warned you, this is a conduct foul on this bench, okay? You really want to be not too loud on this one, you got to make sure everyone understands. Conduct, blue bench, going white. Okay, so that way everyone's aware that, okay, he's already, ooh, he's already been warned. And now he's getting this one. Okay, and then what would come next? And then the next time, well, the first time you try and just lose the ball. Then the second time, maybe his team is on defense, you know, and you and you use the conduct foul. Okay, in that case, he's got to, someone's gotta to have to see, you know, you throw the flag down, let them run around, make them wonder, like, oh my gosh, what do you call? What's going on? <laughs> what's, what's gonna happen? And then all of a sudden, you know, the other team scores. And then this one, we got to walk over and be like, okay, there was a conduct foul on that bench. <laughs> on the bench. You don't say the coach. Just say the bench. Blue bench. It was waved off by the goal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they scored a goal. Okay. Because you were too busy not worrying, worrying about what I was going to call on you versus uh, coaching the defense. Okay. The next one. Yeah, that would be the – oh, sorry. This is conduct with, with possession, so you just switch it. Then the next one would be make sure – uh, you know, have it happen at a time where the team is going to serve a foul because they're not in possession of the ball or not entitled to possession. Okay, it could even be a dead ball and the other team's about to bring it in. Okay, conduct. Okay, then finally, the conducts aren't working. What do we go to? UCLA. <laughs> U.S. <laughs> the U.S., the unsportsmanlike conduct, that's a minimum one minute non releasable. Okay, you could do two. You could actually do three. I would probably, I think one is probably enough at this point, unless, you know, he's throwing F-bombs and, like, threatening your life. Then you'd probably just want to eject it. But you probably want to, right here is one minute, and then the next one, yeah, if, if this happens, uh, this is the nice thing about this one is if the coach is serving one minute USC here, it doesn't matter what the second one is, because in high school, he's going to be ejected after two, just like with the players, two unsportsmanlike conduct fouls in the same game, okay, or non-releasable ones, all right? So this is really important because this is just the same as ejecting him. You could just, you could go straight to ejection at any point if you needed to. I don't, has anyone actually done that, straight to ejection, or not ridden the ladder all the way up to ejection. Can you, have you done that before? I've never done that. Okay, good. No, I assume that. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> okay. No, I'm, I'm still waiting. waiting. I'm, I'm still, still waiting. waiting. Could be this year. Uh, no, this is... 
So just know that you could you could just jump to ejection at any point. That would be like the highest up here. But really, you want to do this because we want to we want to take it away from us. We don't want the we don't want it to look like we're the ones that are the problem. We want to be like this is like your boss documenting your bad behavior. Okay, you've had your review. We've told you. Okay, you keep doing it, and now you've got this double whatever you know days without pay. Up uh, now you'll be fired. Okay, and then it doesn't look like it was the poor mismanagement of you know the, the people. All right, so you want to make sure that you know you're you're giving him every opportunity. And now, once your game report comes, you explain all this, and then the next day, that coach, especially in high school, the next day he'll be called into the AD's office at his school, and the principal, one of the principals, will be there with them, and they're going to be like, "What are you doing?" Okay, and they're going to have to explain why they didn't fix their behavior at every single one of these, as opposed to, you know, I was ejected because the referee is racist, <laughs> you know, or something. Okay, well, you guys are both white. How'd that happen? Um, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, the coach can, can blame, because this type of person that gets all the way to here is the type of person that blames other people, right? <laughs> Typically, <laughs> that's just the way our society is. Like, so make it so they can't, they are blameless. You're like, you did your job. Look, we did our job. We were trained on how to do this. This is the ladder. I climbed the ladder all the way as I was trained. You can even write that in there. Per our training on 1-9-18, uh, 7.09 p.m., this is what we were supposed to do. Okay, so make sure you put it on them. Okay, and do, do your best. And then also make sure, please don't do anything to, like, obnoxious or antagonistic. Make sure you're quiet. You speak calmly when you speak to them. You know, a lot of times uh, they say, you know, you can go like this, don't. You know, don't touch a person anyway whenever you're talking to them. Like, uh, what was it? The, don't, touch, yeah, don't touch anyone ever. But you know how some people are like, they touch the elbow or whatever. Like, hey, I wanted, who, I just read something. I saw this last weekend. Somebody, did you guys see what I see I'm talking about where the guy like, touched the referee's elbow? Yes, it was yeah. my partner. It was, <laughs> no, not, <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, not, not in, it was in a football game. But oh, okay. because he touched the elbow. Uh, he was just kind of like, hey, you know, like, and he touched the elbow of the guy. Automatic ejection, but you don't touch the ref. Really. There was a it was a football game. Like a ref blew a call, and then I was trying to help a player up, but the player like shoved his hands away. Yeah. And then he was that was that players. was the Kentucky game, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the national the was tossed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, the no, players. The the that was that yeah. that was the situation where the referee. I kind of feel like if you're gonna put yourself into a fight, or if you're gonna put yourself where you're trying to help somebody up. Like you're you're touching them. Like you didn't have you don't have to touch the players ever. That's why you don't have luck. Probably yeah. you shouldn't. Yeah, you don't. You shouldn't. <laughs> Just don't. Okay. Um, and he helped the player up, and while he's doing that, the player, you know, almost instinctively was like this. And I saw on video. Did anyone see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like it didn't. It's not that big a deal, right? Yeah. The kid's kind of like this. And you're like, yeah, I'm sure he made a face. You know, like what are you doing? Uh, you know, maybe disgust, maybe a little of disgust mixed with, uh, you know, confusion. You know, like, why are you helping me up? And then that kid got ejected. <laughs> He's the number one rusher on their team, and they lost by one point. Yeah. Okay, or seven points. Like one, one, one point. Point. They lost by one point. <laughs> okay, so you think they're going to get a nice uh, letter in the mail for about that referee and why he chose to eject that person? Okay, don't be like that. Make sure that you put yourself in the right place. At the right time, and that your your conduct is blameless. Why you should do those things? Okay. And after you give the guy his first unsportsmanlike conduct, you ask him if he can start warming up as assistant coach. <laughs> no, maybe you shouldn't ask him to warm up as assistant. After that one. Okay. All right. So phrases for your back pocket. Okay. Oh, here's some good ones. We talked about these. So these are some things you can be saying to the coaches at all of these. I hear you, coach. Okay, from my angle, I did not see that. It was right in front of you. <laughs> That's what he's going to say. It was right in front of you. I'm sorry I did not see that. I hear you. Coach. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer, like, why was that a, why was that not a slash? Or why was yeah, that a slash? How was that not a slash? <laughs> How was that not the same as the other one? And I had that one last weekend. He sent me that. How was how that any different than... What happened down there? 
And I just stopped and I looked at him and I said 27 slash 90 seconds. And then I left because I don't know what to say at that point. Like there's no, <laughs> well, I eventually kept talking. They just said, I'm sorry, I really don't know what you're referring to. We can talk about it later. And do we talk about it later? No, I try and make sure I don't even make eye contact with that guy. <laughs> and then I get out the field as quickly as possible and get my water, okay? Because I need to stay hydrated, and not because I'm trying to avoid that guy. Because I don't really want to talk to him. And don't try to, you know, be cordial. Don't, don't like change directions and totally like not look at the guy. If someone's coming up to you, okay? You're gonna have to take it. Okay, and just be like, hopefully they won't shake hands because that's always really weird. Like your afraid going to break your hand or something. You know, okay, thank you. You know, let them say it. I find that if you just let them say what you want to say and don't say anything back, you say as little as possible. Because some people, you know, they're like my wife. She just wants to vent. And once she said what she needs to say, then it's done. I'll never say that to them, but sometimes I feel like saying it. You know, like, okay, thanks. Yeah, my wife likes to talk like that too. I'll see you later. Okay, from my angle, I can see it. Let me find out. <laughs> this, is, this is the best one for an umpire. Okay, because a lot of times they'll ask you, what's that guy calling over there? This, this, this is anyone. A lot of times it's they don't hear because they're not listening, but they don't hear what the call is from your partner over in the corner, and they'll, so I'll, they'll ask you. You're like, uh, let me, you, this is the best time to say, let me find out and get back to you. Okay, and then if you don't get back to them, you know, you have, you're a busy guy. Okay, don't feel bad. Okay, remind me. <laughs> remind, this is even better, though. I like this one. Remind me at the next timeout. Okay, that way the onus is on them to do it. And if they forget, okay. You got, like, Coach, I told you to tell me at the next timeout. I've got stuff to do. I've got to watch you know, the, the, the players. I've got to check sticks. i got to get a water break. Like, I, I can't help you right now. Okay, I don't know what they mean by that. Coach, I need your help. <laughs> Does it say in the notes what they mean by that one? But I'm assuming it's help for players. Help, you know, I need your help controlling your players. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Players. Okay, yeah, thanks. Or I need your help context. in controlling the fans, your, your sideline. Yeah, okay. Coach, I need your help in that situation. Okay, something, I'm guessing there's something more specific. Okay, in, in the education world, we put a little blank line under there called sentence frame. And that lets you know that they can enter other things. Um, Possibly yeah, yelling at a partner as well. They're yelling at a you know, novice partner. Okay, so I, I need your help in maintaining good sportsmanship. Uh, something I like to use. Okay, coach, we need to use good sportsmanship. Let's be good examples of sportsmanship out here. Thank you. Okay, then you don't have to even address, you know, you don't, you don't want to demean them and say, like, coach, you're talking like a little baby right now, which is what I want to say. Okay, I, it really bugs me when grown men whine. <laughs> I really want to say that, but I don't. Maybe I will someday. Your last name. Raise your hands. Okay, here's things we don't want to say. <laughs> coach, it's only club ball. Our coach, it's uh, you know, it's only youth. That's right. Our coach, it's only JV right now. It's not the final four. <laughs> Uh, do you <laughs> do you want to coach a rep today? <laughs> and then they'll say, I am a rep. And then what do you say, Gino? If the coach says, Oh, I am a rep. No, you don't. You say, you say, not today. You're not today. Not today. Today you're a coach. Uh, next time, I'm you don't want to say something like, Next time I'm flagging you. Although you, yeah, right. It's uh, it's it is an ultimatum, but then it's also you're saying. Uh, you know, I'm flagging you. That that means you've got to remember and actually do it the next time, because you're saying you're going to do that. But then you're also acknowledging that they're saying something, they're doing something that's bad enough to be flagged now, and then you're not flagging it at that time. Okay, that's what. That's actually I, I saw a presentation one time where they use this with uh, fouls. You don't want to tell a kid, "Hey, stop slashing him. I'm going to flag you next time." It's the same sort of thing because what did you just say? You're committing a foul, and I'm not calling it. Not only does that coach hear that and flip out, either one, uh, it's also at a legal standpoint, you're not doing your job to maintain safety by saying that. <coughs> okay, anything that can be used against you in the court of law, by all means, don't say it. 
okay? You can think it, you can, of course, and you can act on it in different ways. Control your sticks, guys, okay? Coach, make sure you're controlling your sportsmanship, okay? Make sure you're setting a good example. Uh, you don't want to say things like control your temper or, or uh, is it how relax on you? You definitely don't want to say this one. Shut up. <laughs> Coach, shut up, okay? I've, I've said before to a player, and I, I think the kid thought I was like, uh, he just looked at me like I just shot him. Like with a gun. Like, you just tell me to shut up. You can't tell me to shut up. And I was like, no, I can tell you shut up. Shut up. <laughs> like, I don't want to. He told me to shut up. And then the coach came up. Did you tell my player to shut up? <laughs> I did tell him to shut up. And you know what to say after that. <laughs> I, I, that wasn't my best moment. I don't, I, I've learned from that. I would never do it again. But sometimes things like that happen and you do things you don't expect. And that's something that I, I felt bad about that afterwards. Um, that's the sort of thing that if it was my team or if I was my my students, because uh, I have told the students shut up at, at least one time in my life, okay, and I apologize to them after that, okay. So you don't want to be in a point where you have to apologize to somebody afterwards, okay. It shouldn't be bothering you after the game what you say uh, to other people, okay. Here's another one: calm down, relax, okay. How well does that work with your significant other? It doesn't, so don't use it, okay. Calm, you may think it works with kids and stuff. It doesn't. It's the same effect. Okay, calm down doesn't help anyone calm down in those situations. Or relax. It just sounds condescending. Okay, here's the ways to increase your presence. Uh, ask the coaches. As the coaches get louder, you get quieter. So like I said before, talk quietly. Okay, like coach, coach. I, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Okay, we can talk about it at the halftime. Okay, put a little list together what we need to talk about. I'm going to talk to my partner at the break. Okay, uh, I'm going to, or hold on, we're at the timeout. I'm going to go talk to him right now and find out what's going on. Okay, that's a good easy one to use every single time. I'm going to go find out what's going on. Okay, you don't have to report back. I didn't say I'm going to report back to you. I just said I'm going to find out what's going on. And a lot of times I'll walk over to my partner and I'll say, did anything happen? What's going on? And he'll say, uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I don't really know what he's talking about either. They don't like a slash at all to me. But I don't look like I'm talking to you about this and telling you to not do it again. Okay, but I'm really not. We're just, it's like that commercial, you know, where the guys, the referees didn't see the call. They're like, Bob, do the hand motion <laughs> like this. You look around like you're trying to look at the watch. And you start pointing at the ground like <laughs> that's where he was out of bounds. Okay, good. We've talked about it. Okay, same sort of thing. Just going over, like sometimes players will ask me something. I'll go, oh, I'll go talk to my partner about that. And then it just happens to be the next break, and I'm already talking to you anyway. Okay? So uh, that's part of being a presence. Making it look like you're addressing their needs and hearing them and using your best judgment on how to handle it, which we're training you to do now. Okay? Uh, make sure you have a presence in a crisis. So that's the same thing. I, You know, keep your cool. Guys, <laughs> hey, stop fighting. Stop fight. No, okay. Make sure that you're out there, you know, with, with a calm presence. Uh, make sure you stay cool, cool, level-headed, collected. Don't tell a kid to shut up like I did, okay? Uh, especially not a coach. Uh, and be controlled about how you do things. Don't ever touch someone like we talked about uh, just a minute ago. Uh, make sure that you're you're not yelling or speaking clearly. If you have to stop and enunciate everything to make sure that it sounds clear, just make sure you don't sound condescending when you do it. Okay? Just be like. Oh my God, oh my God, how are we going to talk about it? Take a deep breath. Okay, coach, I hear you. Here's what we're going to do. I talked to my partner. Yes, there were two fouls on the play. The first foul was this, and the second foul was on the blue player. Those are simultaneous fouls, so we're both going to be, once they find out that like there's at least one from each team, that calms down a lot of people. Okay, and also take your time in speaking. Don't do like I said before, blow the whistle, blow the whistle, and then talk while you're doing the whistling. Okay, take a second, then speak so that they can hear you. Oh, poor conduct from spectators. Oh. Okay, so this doesn't happen as much anymore, but I, you know, 10 years ago is a little different. Um, we want to make sure that if you're having problems with the sideline, Okay, this, this doesn't have to be at a high school game like this one obviously is. Okay, this, could, this happens actually a lot in youth games. I find that uh, the parents get rowdy and rowdier up until about U13, 
and then maybe eighth grade, and that's like the pinnacle of like everything. And then after that, it kind of tapers off a little bit until you get to varsity, okay, which is kind of nice. Because um, the high school kids can drive themselves, I think, by then, so the parents stop coming to things, which is great. Um, but, uh, you know, they, for some reason, especially by eighth grade, they feel like my kid's been playing from three years. I know everything now. I know those stupid things to say, like call it both ways, uh, ref, or uh, keep the players safe. All those same things that they yell with such vigor <laughs> every single game. Okay? So, but you already get to a point where they really don't know what they're talking about and they're being unsportsmanlike. If that's the case, you know, that's something, that's not something you need to address yourself. You don't need to go out there and talk to those people. Um, if you want to, I guess you could. I don't really recommend it. Um, but the, the first, per, first line of fence is the head coach. The head coach is the person you warn of that fan. Uh, you know, if you're not sure whose fan it is, you're going to have to go to both coaches and be like, Coaches, hold on at the next break. Um, that person out there is really out of line. Is that part of your team? Is that part of your team? And they're both going to say what? No. no, I don't know that guy. Okay. Uh, and I guess in that case, you might have to. But typically, it's like, oh, that's my friend's dad. Yeah, he's like that. I'm really sorry. Like, okay, thanks for being sorry. Now, uh, if this doesn't change, I'm going to need you to go and handle it. Okay. And then I put it on the coaches to know that, you know, hey, you need to do a better job talking to your parents. You need to do a better job um, making sure that your team, you know, your your fans, your players, uh, your parents, everyone knows how to conduct themselves at a lacrosse game. Okay, and then eject fans that do not comply after warning. Okay, this is somewhere you you would only have to do something like this, and as a last resort, typically it's the head coach's responsibility, and then who's. Ladies, the assistant the athletic director or the program director or the program director representative uh, that's supposed to be at the fields that we do our games or leagues at. Okay. Um, but just keep in mind in this situation, you're going to have to keep record of this, write it down on your notepad uh, of what happened, what was said, uh, because they're going to ask you, or, or we're going to ask you because they're going to ask us what happened. This player, this, this, uh, <laughs> this this parent is saying that you ejected him because you're racist. Okay, now I'm gonna explain it to him again. Okay, that's sorry. That's the thing my kids always say to me every day in class. You said that because I. What are you, you say? You can't send me to the principal's office. That's racist. <laughs> it's not racist. Okay. So uh, anyway, so be sh be aware that those are the things that can kind of happen uh, and eject <laughs> that you might have to address the poor conduct of spectators, but it's not ultimately responsibility. It's the head coach or the person uh, in charge of the field or the, or the thing like that. If you eject a fan, is that a penalty on that team's bench? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you, I think in high school you technically can give the home team a penalty, but I wouldn't. Yeah. For a fan. Or, you know, it's game management, you know. Yeah. Take the fan out. You typically, uh, if it's some, if it's a high, especially with high school games, uh, it's the age. Can I just make a request? Please don't penalize the team when you pick your fan out. That's just so many phone calls and emails, and it's just not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Please. All right, that's, that's where you show a little bit of grace and be like, okay, that guy's. A, now, if it's the coach though, that you got to penalize. That's different, right? but yeah. not the fan. All right. Because then that's something that the AD has for them. Look, and you penalize the team. Those teams where those kids worked so hard, you worked so hard preparing them, and then you acted like that in front of them. Okay? All right. Uh, we want to do Kahoot. Let's see. All right. No, no, it doesn't have the game pin. I have to set it up. Okay, sorry, I didn't set it. I guess upset you don't get to do the Kahoot. No, it needs the game pin. I, I think I should have kept, kept it up there. Okay. If I figure it out later, you can play. Okay. All right. So your homework is make sure you pass random just rules test. Remember, it's 100 questions. Uh, it's all. He said 85 in his email. Did you notice that? Yeah. I think it's 85. I don't know why they did that. Did it come between? They had 80, 90, and then just make it everyone 85. Anyway, 80% is only for new people. 
Level two and three is uh, 90. All right. And that's, that's t if you hit 80%, that's 20 questions you missed. And, <laughs> Like that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of questions. I, we we need more from our R's and you know our high level umpires. Okay, you need to know at least ninety percent of the rules out there. Okay, it's open book. You should be able to do it. And I think they give you two cracks at each one. They give you two yeah. cracks at each yes. <laughs> oh, so, no, it tells you. Did anybody finish the question? Yeah. I got yeah. picked up. Oh, yes. What? We had problem. And you don't get a percentage off. No. 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 What? Wow. This is crazy. John, it's okay. So have the you know, the Give us a little yeah. talent for it, <laughs> Okay, so I didn't know that. So you take the test, you get it wrong, it tells you right away. Yeah, it tells you, it tells you where to look it up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How, what? After you, what you pick it up and you submit it, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. You're talking, you you're talking you about as soon as you click the button. As soon as you yes. click the button, it tells you if you got it right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So you got to get it and you have one more chance to get it correct, and they give you the exactly uh, where in the book. What will they answer? 4-5. I'll be at the 90s this year, boy. Okay. Yeah, but there's a couple, All right. There's now a that a you guys are funny, that is comfortable really actually. Immediate feedback. Uh, <laughs> for them to finish it. In, in our instantaneous society, you need to know. You know, there's there's no way. You, think about the old days. We do homework, and you do like 20 problems, and the next day you go over in class. Does anyone care? No, <laughs> they don't care. They don't even bring the paper the next day. Like it's in and out. Who cares? Anyway, instantaneous feedback. I like that. Okay, I still think you should get, if you get it wrong the first time, you should get not 100% on that question. You should get like 90% of some portions. So that way, the hundreds are real 100s and not, <laughs> not a, a 90, really a 97.8. There's a lot of questions that say they want the best answer. No. Yeah. I like it, I like it, I like it. I don't circle like the this. single best answer or circle all that apply. Yeah. Oh, okay. Shit. All right. So we're gonna take a break. Uh, it's 7:30 now. We'll reconvene in 10 minutes at 7:40. Go ahead and take a break. Go to the bathroom. Restroom's right around the corner to the right. Um, we'll throw these water uh, Go ahead and take a look at that test. Make sure you review. Uh, ask questions. Talk to your neighbor. Catch up where they what they did over the break. John, who's Steve? Steve? Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. 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 Steve. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Okay, so you just get that one. Sure. Yeah. I noticed that. Do you guys feel for it? Is that still from the jacket? Yeah, I did that too. Yeah. I see that video was seeing with Matt. I was like, Sunday. Yeah, I thought that sucks. I think it was a little. Yeah. So you got 99? Wow. That's. You did it twice? Well, no, I double clicked on the thing. So it's a question about how to jump very soon. It's a question. It's only pretty good. The only thing I'm going to say is why I don't. Seriously, no way. Should get less than one night. Oh, okay. oh you know, I think there's a second question. I think there's yeah, a lot of retries. Just get one retry. No, I mean, like, the actual test. the whole test. So, maybe. 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 So, Relax. 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 Relax.
on the seat. What would you rather? Can I get the list? Can I get the list? There was twice that. Just, 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 That's why I, I haven't been here for the last Four guys, they're like all four guys. 
So now you've thrown the flag, you've blown the whistle, tased them. There's a bunch of different scenarios that may have happened before you blew that whistle. Let's figure out what we're going to do now, right? Uh, 
figure out. All right. Uh, so recognizing the situation. A foul occurs. So you see something that happens on the field. Now we've got this whole decision tree that we need to walk through, right? Uh, we need to figure out how we're going to deal with this foul that just occurred on the field. Um, so, one of the first questions you're going to ask yourself is, was it a loose ball or was there possession involved? Am I pushing the right button? <laughs> oh, I'm just pushing the green button. Oh, okay. That's a laser Daniel pointed out. Ah, okay. Yeah. He's pushing the wrong button. Okay. Um, was the ball loose or was it possessed? All right? Now, if it was loose, now you've got to ask yourself, was this a personal foul? I swear I'm pushing the right button this time. If it was a personal foul and it was loose, then we're going to kill it right away. Flag should be up in the air, right? Per anytime it's a personal foul, flag should be in the air no matter what, right? Um, if it's a loose ball, we're going to kill it right away. Now, what if it was a technical foul? Loose ball, technical foul. I'm going to let somebody jump in here. Loose ball, technical foul, what are we going to do? Play on. Play on, right? <laughs> Loose ball, technical foul, we got to play on. Right? See, we're going to see if the team that was uh, disadvantaged, if they end up with possession, then we'll just continue on, right? Um, if they don't end up with possession right away, we'll go ahead and kill it. We'll give them the possession that they're due. There you go. Play on. Uh, now, if it's not loose, then that means one of the two teams has possession of the ball, right? So, so now you have to ask yourself, is it the team in possession of the ball that committed the foul, right? And now we're going to look again at was it personal or technical. So if the team in possession of the ball committed the foul, and it's a personal foul, we know it's a personal foul, flag going up. What else do we need to consider here? Or what else do we need to do here? Anyone? <laughs> We're going to blow the whistle right away. Right? The team in possession committed this personal foul. Blow the whistle right away. Right? Flag is in the air. There you go. And then we'll assess the penalty. If it's technical, it's all right. If it's technical um, and it's the team in possession that committed that technical foul, we know that's just a turnover, so we're going to blow the whistle right away, turn the ball over to the other team, and go. Right? And then the last option, if it's not a loose ball again, that means someone has possession. If it's not the team uh, that committed the foul, then it's going to be the team that did not commit, that was fouled. Right? So now, if it's a personal foul, again, we're throwing a flag, but because the team that was fouled has possession, we're going to allow them the opportunity to finish their play. Right? Uh, so, flag down, slow whistle, as we call it. Um, and then if it's a technical foul, it's going to be the same thing, right? We're going to still allow them to, to finish their play. The major difference is how we're going to deal with it after the play is done. With a personal foul, we're going to have either a one, two, or three minute penalty. With a technical foul, it would just be a 30 second penalty, or it may even be wiped off if a goal is scored, right? All right, but either, in either case, flag goes down. All right. Hopefully this is clear to everybody. Uh, this is pretty basic stuff. Now, flag down, slow whistle. Um, so the flag down, slow whistle was a situation where the team that commit that was fouled is in possession, right? So we have a flag down. We allow them to continue their play. And we're not doing we're not doing goodie for. Yes. For high school, I thought it was just they can leave the box. Same thing. Oh, okay. Same kind. But if the ball falls on the ground, we're killing it, right? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. For high school. Yeah. 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 So, so you can go outside. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's bouncing in front of the goal and going. Yeah, if it's a bounce it's a shot, shot, if it's a bounce shot, then we're not killing it, right? We're waiting to see what happens with that shot. And if that same bounce shot, but then it misses and the guy behind the cage on the offense picks it up, but we're not going anywhere, so it's still. That's a great question that I don't know the answer to. We do kill that one. You have to. You the shot one. is over at that point. The right. shot is over. So yes. even though he's trying to. So it's, it, it's like if it's uh, it's like. Let's say this is the weirdest thing that could happen is that you have a that you have a bounce shot, right? Yes. Bounce shot bounces, hits the goalie's stick, right? The goalie has saved it at that point. No matter what happens after that, you gotta blow your whistle. So the goalie can pop hard it up, which means it hits the goalie's stick and goes up. Yeah. At that point, the goalie's already saved that shot, okay. so it's over. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, so then so we, so we blow the whistle as soon as that happens. Yes. Correct. Wow. All right. What if it misses the goalie and somebody behind the cage catches it? Okay. So, so, so the question, so the question asked was, if it's a bounce shot, misses the goal, the goalie misses the cage, and uh, an attacker behind the goal catches it, do we allow play to go on? And the answer is no. In that case, if we've got a flag down and it was a bounce shot, we're going to kill it once the shot is missed. Um, and then another question we got was, what if it's a shot and the guy behind the goal catches it, yeah. right? And, and it didn't bounce. I, I'm not sure if you were saying it didn't bounce, but let's go ahead and talk about that now, right? So if it didn't bounce, let's say it even came off of the goalie's stick, right? And it goes behind the goal, kid catches it and never touches the ground, play is still going. Hang on. It's the goalie's stick. You got to kill it. It's the goalie or his equipment. Well, yeah, or if it's any part of the goalie's stick. Same. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You tell it. But no, but that's it's the same point. question. The ball goes by, doesn't touch anything, yeah. but you know it's a shot. But the guy still catches it behind. Yeah. So if it doesn't touch anything in that case, yeah, then then we uh, allow play to go. Then it's a pass. <laughs> then it's a pass. There you go. <laughs> okay. Look like a pass to me, coach. <laughs> And so the situations where we are going to kill it, we've gone over a lot of this. Do we have people online that are? Yes. Okay. I think so. Okay. We have one. That's the text. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. And inspector. All right. Um, so the situations where we are going to kill it are going to be if the ball drops on the ground, we're going to kill it. Uh, if a goal is scored, um, if the ball goes out of bounds, if it hits the goalie, if it hits the goalie, his equipment. Or the, uh, or the cage, uh, we're gonna kill it, and then offensive team offensive play technical foul. Uh, if the if the team in possession commits a technical foul or any foul, uh, it could be a personal foul too, right? Yes. Um, Flag down shot goes off of defensive play or or offensive play. That's a shot clock situation. You're gonna have to worry about high yeah. No, no, for for flag down, it won't matter. Can we can it deflect off of an offensive? I think there was a change in the rules this year on that. What if it goes off of one of us? We're part of I think we're just considered part of the field. You're part of the field and yeah. really cross. Um, there's one. Oh, the ball. did I say out of bounds? I did. Yeah. Oh, and if the other team gains possession. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on. Sorry. Doesn't another defensive foul kill the play? In the final two minutes of the game. That's a good point. Uh, so in the final two minutes of the game, um, if the team in the lead has possession and they're fouled, we have a flag down. If they're fouled a second time within those last two minutes of the game, we have a second flag down, we kill it immediately. So we allow them to play their, their man up uh, opportunity there. Okay. Um, relay and report. So now that we've thrown the foul, we've killed the play, or I'm sorry, we've thrown the flag, we've killed the play, now we've got to report to the bench, right? Yeah. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to communicate with our partner, make sure we both or all three of us know um, what's going on. What was the foul? Who is, who's going in the box? Who's going in the um, Also with the field, we want to make sure we take care of, of the field situation, uh, make sure the players know, especially the goalie that's about to go man down, um, and, where, and where the restart is going to be. Number two, we walk over to the table, right? Typically it's the trail that's reporting this, so we walk over to the table, 
And I don't know if it's here. Okay, I'll cover step two still. Walk over to the table and we do C note, right? So uh, the first thing we're going to we're going to do is the C, which is the color, blue, um, and then N, which is the number, number. blue twelve, right? And then O, which is the offense. Say so we got to push, and then uh, T, which is the time, will be forty five seconds. And then E is any extra information that might need to be reported. You know, let's say it was a personal foul, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. So extra information might be, you know, it's non-releasable. Uh, or maybe an explanation of, of you know, uh, simultaneous fouls, for example. Uh, we, you might want to get into it a little bit more with the coaches to be clear about who's serving, for how long, non-releasable, all that kind of stuff. Stay ahead. A couple of things that's important on um, when you have a flag yeah, yourself. Oh, sorry. So when you have a flag, no matter how obvious it is to you, your partner might, might have been looking at something else. So make sure you're very clear and concise in what you're calling, and don't make up other signals. Okay, a slash is this way. This is not a slash. I don't know why people, some some people start start doing slashes this way. And across the field, you're looking at a moving. It almost looks like a moving screen. You're like. Why is why is he calling movie screen and fighting that? So it's, it gets sometimes confusing. So keep the signals consistent. Do the C note to your partner. That way he can relay it to the table. Um, the other thing is, before you get to the table, know what you're gonna say. So say it in your head as you're walking over. Once you get to the table, now you're just verbally saying it. So before I walk over, I see it from Steve. Blue 36 push, 30 seconds. Now I walk over. Now I, I shout midline, I say to the table, blue 36, push 30 seconds. So that way it goes faster and quicker and looks way more professional. Yep, and that becomes even more important when you've got multiple people going into the box. Go over it in your head before you report it to the table because it's easy to get that stuff mixed up. Uh, finally, the goalkeeper, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but we want to make sure that the goalkeeper knows where the restart is going to be and how long he's going to be manned down. Right? And that's usually the person who's not reporting the foul who's going to talk to the goalkeeper. All right, so here we go. C note. I guess I jumped the gun on this a little. Oh, we got a video. Oh, he did it. What is that? Watch your volume and watch your speed. Yeah. I don't care if the kid had a three minute ejection foul. We are not blue 27 with an illegal body. Take his out of here. <laughs> no, it is blue 27, illegal body check, three minute ejection foul. Yeah. That tone, that pace. You could be as jacked up as you can be. That's the pace and the tone we need. You would go blue 27 slash one minute. We good? We're good. Okay, something like that helps. Or if you got the crazy one, we have to go blue, two, seven, slash, one minute. How much time does white still have? Okay, white, you're releasing 11 seconds. Blue, you're out at 422. We're gonna have uh, two guys in the box right now. We're gonna be five on five. That's where the E comes in, the explanation. As I was taught again four years ago, tell a story if you have to. They make sure that whole group right there knows exactly what's going on before you turn your back and go. The worst thing I've seen, I hate to see it, is when you go, you walk away. Hey, ref. Hey, ref. Yeah, what do you got? No, no, no. I have blue 27. So make sure it's slow, clear. Good. All right, so make sure it's slow. He's in a classroom, so he's talking real calmly and quietly. 
when you're on the field, you might need to be a little bit louder, but that doesn't mean, you know, like he was saying about the ejections. That doesn't mean getting crazy and, you're out of here, right? Uh, loud enough so everybody, so the coaches and the table can hear you, but calm and controlled, right? All right. And objective. Is, objective was his word. The other thing is know your positioning on the field when you're reporting the penalty. Make sure you're far enough back that both benches can see you, but don't be too far back where the uh, table personnel can't hear you. So you got to find a medium depending on what level you're doing to make sure everyone is involved. So if you're the trail on the far side of the field and you have to cross the field to come and talk to the table, cross the field, all right? Uh, get over there. Don't do it from the far side of the field. You know, why five slash, right? Come over to the table. Make sure everyone's got it clear before you walk away. All right. So if you're getting evaluated, Frank Lab set. Yeah, that's a great point, Pete. You're, um, it's like a team. Imagine you're you stand in front of the TV screen as if you were on TV, making big NFL call. Frank hands the same metaphor. Pretend you're on TV, so the cameraman doesn't have to do this back and forth. That you're standing perfectly. Yeah. So I actually get dinged on this on every assessment, every evaluation. Um, set your feet. Before you before you report to the table, set your feet. Right? <clears throat> the example that that uh, Pete was giving right now, and um, Frank mentions this all the time too, is imagine the cameras are on you. You've seen it, you see it in football all the time, right? Cameras are on you, you're standing there in front of the camera and you're reporting you're reporting the foul. Right? Those guys aren't walking around while they're reporting the foul. They're not walking toward the table. They're not running up to the table still reporting the foul. They set, they report it calmly, and then they walk away once they know everything, everything is clear. Okay, so set your feet before you report. We're not in a hurry. We can get it right. Be calm and collected. All right. So back to C note. Blue, 2 7, slashing. One minute, and then explanation is optional. Use when needed, so they give some examples here. Uh, dead ball foul, team A, ball at center X. You know, it's, you, know you might need to explain what the restart is going to be. Um, you might need to give an explanation of the sequence of events, if, if that's important. Uh, you know, things like that. Anything that will give clarification to the situation, especially for the coaches and the players. Right? When to use the in-home? Who can give me an example of when to use the in-home? Coach, conduct. Conduct on the coach, conduct on the bench, right? And that's pretty much the only time I can think of that we're going to use the in-home. Oh. Okay, I guess if, no, if we know that a foul occurred but we didn't get the number, uh, we'll use the in-home in that case. Hopefully we never have to do that. You should use it during the bullet when it's a foul and you're on the back of the bullet. You know, not in high school, you uh, don't play anymore. Not in high school, yeah. You forfeit. Some leagues will allow you to, if the, if, if, if the goalie, some leagues and tournaments, if the if the team doesn't have a backup goalie, if the goalie commits a personal foul, um, they'll allow you to put the end home in and leave the goalie out on the field. Um, in high school, if the goalie commits the foul, the goalie's going in. It's a... Uh, so before the game, when you do the pregame, when you go up to table personnel, I, I stopped asking the coaches for the in-home. So what I do now is I literally ask the table personnel, who's your in-home? And what they're going to say is, what does that mean? And I'm going to say, where's your book? And they're going to bring out their book. So now we have done two things at, with, at the same time. Check that they have a book, and I, I can figure out who their in-home is as well. Um, and then there's no, there's no questioning later in the game because I've had a game where the coach gave me one in home, but the book had a different one. And for whatever reason, the opposite opposite personnel had the same numbers. And now we have a, a disagreement on who the in home should be. And the in home should be the first attackman in the book. That's who the in home is. So they have to be starting. Yes. They have to be a starter. Yeah. yeah. The first yeah. starting attackman. And they have to be in the lineup when you go at the beginning of the game. All right. So, if we didn't get the number, and then if we have a penalty on the bench, right? 
That's what we're going to use that in. All right, play on. Let's go over the play on mechanic. So we talked a little bit earlier about when to use play on. Um, that's when we have a loose ball foul. Uh, that's a technical foul. We use play on. There's another time when we'll use a play on is when the goalkeeper, when you know, we have a uh, goalkeeper interference, right? Which is inside, you know, goalie's in this crease and somebody makes contact with him. Um, so that that's another situation where we where we'll use a play on. Uh, so play on steps. Team B commits a loose ball technical. Play on, right? Play on's got to be loud, right? This way, all the players know that a foul has occurred. Okay, um, arm goes up, we need to make sure we're using the right signal. It's not play on, right? Arm goes up. So team A is the team that was fouled in this case. Um, so if team A does not gain possession pretty darn quickly, uh, then we're gonna blow the whistle, right? Um, eyes on any extra action. We're going to blow the whistle and we're going to be there to make sure that the that the uh, other team gets the ball and we get the restart going pretty quickly, right? Uh, so right after you blow the whistle, you indicate why you blew the whistle by signaling the foul, right? Whatever that technical foul may have been, offside, push, you know, holding, Those are some typical ones. And then you point in the direction that you're awarding the ball and you say the color of the team who you're awarding the ball to, right? So that's a good play on mechanic. And then, as soon as that team picks up the ball, they got five seconds to pick it up. As soon as they pick up that ball, if they've got... I don't want five seconds. It's just for this one. Whatever, like, referee thinks is fair, right? You got to play on. It could be a second. It could be three seconds. You'd probably get yelled after that. Oh, oh no no no! I'm saying after you've blown the whistle, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they have five seconds. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, after you've blown the whistle and shown who gets the who gets the possession of the ball, they've got five seconds to pick it up. And once they do, if they've got their five yards, let's go. Blow the whistle and go. Right. Um, the other thing that can happen during the play on. So that was a scenario where the team who was fouled does not immediately get possession. If the team that was fouled is clearly going to get possession, and uh, and you see it, you see it getting ready to happen. Then, once they pick up the ball, uh, play on is over, right? And um, you call out the, the color of the team that now has possession, and that is an indication that the play on is over, right? So we got a loose ball push, play on. White team who got pushed now scoops up the ball, and they're making their way. White, and then you better get into that play, right? Get into your position. All right. Any questions on the play on? Okay. White team gets the ball, gets about one step, and gets checked. Is that? That's okay. So that's good. Now, how much possession as, do they have? As, a, as so, the question is: the question was, um, so let's say the white team is the team that got fouled. Right, uh, and then they go and they scoop up the ball, and right when they scoop up the ball, they take one step, and then the ball gets checked out of their stick. Right, is the play on over, or are we going to kill it in that case? And I would say, as a referee, um, what you're looking for is, does the team that got fouled is, is the team that got fouled uh, in a position where they're going to have a clear possession, right? Uh, because they're entitled possession of that ball, right? Uh, so if they're entitled possession of the ball. We want to make sure they have a clear possession. If they pick it up in one step and gets checked out of their stick, or they get lit up, you know, blow the whistle. We got the technical foul. Give them the possession that they're given. Okay. No, this is. So I have a. That's a really good point that you just made. Don't be so quick to end these playoffs, or, or to say playoffs over red ball or whatever. Let let them gain possession because you can always blow it then and say no 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 there was a push it's a white ball. Right? But if you say white ball, that, now it's a check, you were too quick to end that play on, now you get yourself in trouble a little bit, right? So you don't have to be quick with it, finishing that play on, 
Um, let it go for an extra second or two. See what happens. Let the play play out, and then decide. Same with the face-offs. You don't have to be super quick on those possession calls, right? Let's see if the, the player actually gains possession. He can shoot, pass, or cradle that ball, uh, apparently, and then call possession or end the play out. Yeah, you don't have to be quick with that with that call. Because the, at the end of the day, we want to give the team that was disadvantaged the ball. And they're entitled to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's actually a great analogy is, is the face-off, right? It's the same thing. Like Ojan said, I don't know if you had your mic on. Um, yeah. Okay. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, possession is what? Possession is the ability to shoot, pass, or cradle, right? So if, you, if he can clearly shoot, pass, or cradle, then play on is over. White ball, right? But hold off on, hold off, because once you do that, you effectively ended the play on. Now, of course, you can always go back and correct yourself, you know, blow the whistle if you, if you feel you did it too soon. Um, but what I was saying is, don't do it too soon. It's better to to give it time and see what happens um, than to jump the gun and then have to correct yourself, right? Yeah, I usually give them one step. I usually, for me personally, I see if they have it and I give them one step. Now, it, it, it all depends on level of play, right? You know, a higher level of play, they usually yeah. have it with, within less than a step. So, but a one step rule is something where I would be kind of looking at. They have the ball and they have one step. You shoot pass or fail. That's just, that is not a technical thing. That's yeah. just a, we, uh, a little bit of that. That's a good advice. Yeah. Some of these young guys are more, more experienced than you're, but some of these younger guys, yeah. how quickly yeah. to kill the play on like loose ball approach or loose ball hold, depending, especially with the level of the game that you're doing, so it's just going to be a little hockey. <laughs> yeah, so. <clears throat> So the comment that Pete made is, is uh, how long are we going to wait? How long are we going to allow a play on to go on before we kill it? Right? Um, and my answer would be, as soon as you see that the team that's entitled the ball is not going to get that ball immediately uncontested, then I'm going to kill it. All right? Um, if the ball... If I have a play on and the ball rolls into an open area of the field where it's going to take the team who's entitled to the ball a couple of seconds to go over there and get it, but they're taking their time to get there and they're clearly going to get it, I'll hold it there for you know three, four seconds because they're uncontested and they're clearly going to go pick up the ball. right? Um, once they're challenged, then I'm going to kill it, give them the ball that they're entitled to. Okay, But as a rule of thumb, Play on should not last for more than about one second, right? Yes. I mean, the other thing is just like you said, think about the positioning. This goes for the experience reps too. Think about the positioning on the field. You know, if the ball is at X, most likely that kid is not going to scoop it up and pass it and have a score. Most likely that's not going to happen. What's going to end up happening is there's going to be four guys that come together at X, and now you're going to have a play on with a flag, and now you're going to have to figure out what happened, who's going in, if they're locked in or not, and all this good stuff. So don't don't get there. End that play on quickly if it's behind X. But if it's above it and the guy is about to scoop it and go towards the cage one on one with the goalie, let that play on go an extra second or two longer if you need to. But realize where the positioning is on the field. That is the key. Kind of the same with what, what you were saying earlier. But if you have both teams, the ball rolls three or four yards away from both players. And both players are bolting at full speed, that's the end of that play. Absolutely. Because they're going to probably collide. And, yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 So <clears throat> so what he was saying is is if you've got a play on and the loose ball is out there, you know, out there in the field and you've got two opposing players getting ready to converge on that ball. Highly contested. Blow it right away. <laughs> Blow it right away. Right. Um, actually, it doesn't even need to be highly contested. If it's contested at all, just blow it right away and give it to the team that's entitled to the ball. Right. All right. Any more questions about play on or comments? All right. Let's play on. Let's, let's play on. Uh, play on. I hear you. All right. Let's go over some definitions here. Um, simultaneous. What does this mean? <laughs> Whistle, whistle. So it's whistle, 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 whistle,
and from dead to dead to dead to beginning of life. That's what simultaneous is. Once it's whistled that it's dead, the time period that occurs between that whistle and the one that restarts it is all between whistles. It could have been just facing each other because they're from the opposing teams. Like <laughs> we're thinking too hard on this <laughs> guys. I think it's a yeah. metaphor. Of that, I think that's right. I think that's what that is. So I was a little, I was a little confused about the arrows and the two whistles, but but what Sean is saying is, you got this basically indicates yeah, you got around. you got a whistle on, on on both teams, right? You got a foul on both teams. Um, okay, no, it's good. All right. Um, I want to expand on simultaneous a little bit more. Um, so the there's a few definitions of simultaneous in the book, right? When we're talking about simultaneous fouls, as opposed to the players serving simultaneously, that's different. But simultaneous fouls, um, there's two different definitions of simultaneous fouls. One of them is just what it sounds like when players on opposite teams commit fouls at the same exact moment. Those are simultaneous fouls. Right? Um, the other definition is a little more obscure because it's actually it actually doesn't happen simultaneously. It's when you have a uh, flag down slow whistle. Right? So team A commits a foul while team B has possession. We throw a flag. Right? Now, during the flag down slow whistle, Team B then commits a personal foul against Team A. All right, now we've got, now we kill the play and we've got simultaneous fouls. Right By the book, those are called simultaneous, even though they didn't happen at exactly the same time. Um, I guess there is one more scenario where you've got loose ball situation. Team A commits a technical foul, play on. And then Team B, who is now entitled the ball, commits a personal foul against Team A. Right now we've got two flags down, simultaneous fouls that are going to be served by both players. All right, it's one of those situations that rarely ever happens, but it's in the book, and we need to remember it, and we need to know it, and be prepared to deal with it when it does happen. Okay. They're both technical fouls. So there's a technical foul. Yeah. So that. So team. So team. So the question is, what if on that play on? We have both technical fouls. So team A commits a technical foul, loose ball, play on. Now team B commits a technical foul, steps offside. That just kills the play on. We kill the play and we give the ball to team B. Right. right? No flags at all. Yeah, no no flags needed. That takes way too much. Yeah. Okay, in simultaneous technicals, the original team that was going to get the ball gets the ball. Right. What if the second one is a, what if the second one is a personal. Yeah, so. Okay, so what happens in that case, we have a loose ball technical foul play on, team A fouls, pushes team B, right? And now team B turns around and says, oh, you're going to push me? How about this? And gives him a slash, right? Yes. Now we kill it right away. We throw two flags, one for the slash and one for the original push, okay? So now they're going to serve what they would normally serve for a slash and a push, and we're going to we're going to deal with it like we normally would any simultaneous foul. So um, whoever serves the longer amount of time is going to lose possession of the ball. Okay. Uh, so in this case, the the team that committed the push, that player is going to serve as thirty seconds, but that team is going to get possession of the ball, right? Because the personal foul serves a longer. Is that locked in? And the first thirty, the first 30 seconds, seconds will be locked in. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So it, it's not releasable for the technical in the first thirty of the first. Exactly. Um, so on that note, so we're talking about we're talking about um, the first thirty. Yeah, that's that's the most obscure of of, of all. Do you understand that? Have 90% of it down. <laughs> <laughs> so two pushes, two technical fouls. Okay. On closing teams. Yeah. So uh, team, so loose ball. Team A pushes team B, right? Um, play on. 
right? And now team B's teammate comes behind team A and gives him a push. That's another technical foul. All we do is we kill it and we give it to team B, right? Because team B was the team that was fouled first. They're in title possession. The only way they lose that in that moment is if they commit a personal foul. But if they commit a technical foul, like a push or, you know, stepping offside, um, then we, that just kills it, and we give them possession, quick restart. Um, now, um, so those are simultaneous fouls. Now, when we've got two players from opposing teams who are going to serve their penalties simultaneously, meaning they start serving their penalty at the same time, we need to make sure that they're locked in, okay? For the amount of time that they're both going to be serving their penalties, we need to make sure that they're locked in. So we mentioned, we touched on this a little bit with the obscure scenario with the uh, play on followed by a personal foul, right? We have one, one player serving 30 seconds, another player serving one minute. Because they're opposing players who are starting their, their penalty at the same time, they're locked in for the time that they're going to be in there together. They're going to be in there together for 30 seconds in this case, so they're locked in for 30 seconds. This is going to be part of, on C note, the E stands for explanation. This is going to be the E, right? You're going to have to explain this pretty clearly so that everybody understands what's going on. Um, white 13, uh, push, 30 seconds, non-releasable. You know, blue, 24, slash, one minute, the first 30 seconds are non-releasable. Right. Everybody clear on that table? Good, good. Then you go. Are they simultaneous? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not doing that. All right. So the technical mechanic for reporting a simultaneous foul, which nobody ever does, is walk at the table. First thing you do when you go to report, we have simultaneous fouls. Right. And then you, you report the rest of your foul. Nobody ever does it. Uh, <laughs> nobody ever does it, but you better. All right. Uh, I think that covers simultaneous. Any questions? I imagine we're going to have some questions. Simultaneous can be confusing. So I have one more. Uh, sure. If both teams commit personal fouls, it goes, the ball is awarded to the team that should have been awarded on the first foul. No. Oh, uh, yes. If if it's simultaneous, simultaneous. If if they're so serving the same amount of time. B, a slash is B. B turns around. Slash is A. If they're serving the same amount of time. Same time. That, yeah, that's that's what makes the difference. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, um, we've got a flag down slow whistle because because team A slash team B, right? So team B is still in possession of the ball, and then someone from team B says, "Oh, you're going to slash my buddy." Here, how about this? And they give you a slash, they give team A a slash. Now we kill it, right? And now we've got two flags down because they're both personal fouls. And uh, now we have to assess the fouls, all right? If they're both one minute fouls, they're gonna be serving for the same amount of time. We said the amount of time that you serve, whoever serves more time will give up possession to the other team. But if they're serving the same amount of time, then the, the possession will go to the team that was first entitled possession of that ball. So the team that first got slashed in that case. Yeah, good point. What about if they're both non-releasable at one minute, both non-releasable one minute? Both would be non-releasable one minute. Yep. Now, if the retaliatory slash was a vicious slash to the head, you know, then we could go two minutes, three minutes, right? And in that case, um, the possession would go to the other team. Um, Bug, Bug had a question. What if there's a face-off? What if there's a face-off? What, ha what happens if there, there's a face-off? Before someone gets possession, there's simultaneous personal fouls and opposite <laughs> Oh. Oh, put it in oh, so before there's possession, so you're talking about loose ball. Loose ball. Okay, so if we've got a loose ball, simultaneous personal fouls, Right? No, this is good. This is good because it happens. Right? So if we got a loose ball, simultaneous. So the only the only way you can have simultaneous personal fouls on a loose ball is if they happen at the same exact time. Right? Um, and in that case, or you or you just don't know who committed the foul first. So you just say they happen at the same time. Now we've got simultaneous fouls on a loose ball. 
We assess them both. We put them in the box. <coughs> we're, if it was a face-off, then we're going to reface. Right? If it was any other loose ball situation, we're going to AP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or in tough possession. Yeah. Yeah, we can't hear about we're going to give you the golden rule for <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're drilling the hell out of simultaneous here. Any any more questions about simultaneous? There's, there's a lot about simultaneous. We've never had a simultaneous in any game I've ever had. <laughs> really? Wow. really? Never done this one right here? Me either. <laughs> 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 never will. <laughs> 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 it doesn't surprise some of us that it's working here, Simultaneous <laughs> fouls. Happen, all right. They happen. Um, I mean, somebody just said that we've never had, you know, he's never had one in this game. They happen, so we just need to be prepared to deal with them. Right? They can be confusing too, um, but if you're prepared to deal with it, you talk to your partners, get it all sorted out, and then uh, report it to the table correctly. Wouldn't be in the rule book if it happened. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. We're still on definitions here. <laughs> what is a dead ball? <laughs> a dead ball is any any situation where uh, where we stop the clock, right? Where we blow the whistle to stop play. Um, it can be a ball going out of play. It can be uh, a timeout. There's goal scoring. Let let yeah. Let's 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 have a few people chime in on, on what we. So I so I've got ball going out of play and a timeout. What else? Goal Gino score. just said goal score, right? What else? When else are we going to get a, a dead ball situation? Said timeout already. Injury. Injury. Right? So if, we, so if we've got an injury where we feel it's serious enough where we need to stop play, then we're going to blow the whistle, stop play. We have an official's timeout. Right? Spectator on the field. <laughs> All right. Spectator on the field. Um, or, or, or anything on the field that should Dog. Be. Right? Dog. A ball. All right? Uh, I've had a dog before. No one wanted to hurt the dog. I was in I was in that Del Mar tournament this weekend, and the coach had his dog, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was on a leash, but the dog was always about five or six feet onto the field. Which dog? Was it? <laughs> what? Which which coach was the last? Did you say which dog was it? Yeah, what kind of dog? Because it was like coach, that dog. I don't remember. I don't. Remember. The one before I went to pet the dog was on the side of that. So it was you. I know. I love it. Um, yeah. So anything that's on the field that shouldn't be, or we need to kill it. Um, what about the time in between uh, quarters or halftime? End of end of quarter. End of period. Right. End of period. What about the game? What about the time preceding the initial faceoff or yeah. after the after the five minutes? When the game's over, is that considered shaking hands? Yeah. Yep, that's all. That's all dead ball time, right? Um, so he mentioned the time before the game starts, before the, the opening whistle, and the time after the final whistle. Um, that's all dead ball time as well. Um, I'm sure we're missing a few. Uh, Any time to kill the play to assess penalties, uh, or to give a turnover for a technical foul. Uh, any anything, anything that we're blowing a whistle for uh, is it, that's going to be dead ball time. Uh, so dead ball is basically the all the time that the ball is not in play is dead ball situation. Okay. All right. Um, multiple fouls. All right. So we can have multiple fouls on the same player. So this is this is important when we're reporting that we report them as, as separate fouls. Um, we can have multiple fouls on different players. When this happens, things can get confusing. We can we can forget who did what, you know. So we got to make sure we get it all sorted out before we report to the table. You, you lost over dead ball. I know there's a question on the test that says uh, slash and during the dead ball period. There's a technical foul mm -hmm. committed by the other team. Who gets the ball? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the question is going back to dead ball. Um, so if we've got a flag down slow whistle, right, because of a slash, let's say, and then we kill the play for whatever reason, and now, during after we've killed it, any time after we've blown that whistle, um, either team commits another foul, 
that foul is going to be assessed separately from the initial foul that occurred. It's not, they're not simultaneous fouls, right? Now we've got sequence involved. So what happened on the field happened first, and then this dead ball foul happened next, right? So we're not considering them simultaneous fouls. So the, the way that we um, deal with that situation is we deal with the, the penalty that was on the field first, right? We report that penalty, and then the live ball penalty, and then whatever happened during the dead ball, we deal with that next. So because of the live ball penalty, let's say team A slash team B, right? Um, so we kill it. So, so at that point, team B is entitled possession of the ball, right? Team A is going to serve penalty. Team B is entitled possession of the ball. But after we killed it, team B, who is entitled possession of the ball, now they did something stupid. Let's say they, you know, they called the opponent a nasty name or something, right? So now we've got a conduct foul against team B that happened during the dead ball. And what happens in, a, what happens in conduct foul? It's a turnover of possession, right? So that player who committed that conduct foul is not going to go into the box. He's not, you know, we're not going to throw another flag. Um, he's going, he basically gave up his team's advantage by giving up possession to the other team. Right? Well, didn't give up the advantage, but gave up possession to the other team by doing that in the dead ball situation. All right, so we assess the live ball and then the dead ball separately. Okay. And they're not simultaneous. So and they're not simultaneous fouls. Possession is changing. Yeah. Now, let's say the the dead ball foul by team B was a personal foul. Let's say it was a slash. A slash. Okay. A dead ball slash. Um, well, now of course the team B player who committed that slash is going to serve time in in, in the box, but um, because he did it during a dead ball. Possession is now going to go to Team A, right? Even though Team A committed a personal foul during live ball, while Team B was entitled possession of that ball, they committed a personal foul. So now they've given up possession to Team A. Is it inter face or would it be possession? You're talking about end of quarter? So the end, so the end of period quarter, between quarters, the guy does a, something stupid. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now I'm glad you asked that because now we've got a, another strange scenario that can happen. All right. So if we go into the end of quarter and and it's it's all even, right? And we have the same number of players on the field, and then a player commits a personal foul during the dead ball, then there we will have no face-off, right? Because he did it during a dead ball, you know, dead ball situation. He's going to serve his time in the penalty box, and he's given up possession to the other team, okay? Um, but there's there's a strange exception to that rule uh, where we will still have a face-off, and that is, let's say we have team A and team B. Team A is playing man down, and they end the, the period man down, right? And now... As they're coming off the field, Team B does something stupid, right? That a person they commit a personal foul where they're going to spend time in the box. Well, now that Team B has a man going in the box, now we're all even again, right? Because we're all even again, we're starting with a faceoff. Okay. So if that dead ball foul between periods makes us all even, then we go to a faceoff. So, I mean, yeah, so if you have, if you look at, if before taking a face-off, you look at the box, and you have human players in there, then you probably have a face. Yeah, that's, that's a good way, that's a good way to look at it. So, at the beginning of a period, as the players come out to face, if you've got this, if both teams have the same number of players in the box, or same number of players on the field, I mean, you know, two ways of saying the same thing, then you're going to have a face-off. Right. Um, sure. Unless the dead ball foul was a technical foul, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but that's an important scenario, though. Uh, if the if the dead ball foul between periods um, ended up creating an all a man even situation where where it was once a man up situation, then we go to a face off.
Okay. You might have to go through a couple slides. You actually went through the next couple slides fast. Okay, good. But we have like five more minutes. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let me get you on. You're good. All right. So I think we've gone through all this. Uh, this is a good visual. I'm going to open up the whole thing and we'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, so now simultaneous files. Uh, once the whistle is blown, <coughs> okay, yeah, we went through, we went through these. So we've got the situation where you've got a flag down slow whistle, and then the team who was fouled then commits a personal foul, right? Um, then in that case, we kill it, we throw the flag, they both serve, right? If we had a flag down slow whistle and the team that was fouled committed just a technical foul, then we kill it, no penalty to the to, to team A here. We just um, enforce the penalty on B1 and uh, we give team A the ball that they were entitled to. And then this is that strange situation where we have the loose ball play on and then the team that was fouled turns around and commits a personal foul. Right? Um, so in that case, they both serve. And remember, the first 30 seconds are non-releasable because they're starting their serving their penalty at the same time. Um, yeah, and then and then if 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 the team that was fouled commits that technical foul on the play on, we just kill the play on and give them the ball that they're entitled to. We already covered this one. Yeah. Well, we so in simultaneous fouls, who do we award the ball to? First and foremost, we award the ball to the team that has less penalty time uh, applied, right? Uh, but if they're both applied the same amount of penalty time, then we award the ball to the team who is first in title possession because of the flag down slow whistle. So this one's easy. The team that had the less time gets the ball. Here, uh, Whoever had possession will keep possession, or if they're entitled possession, they'll keep possession. Um, but if that ball was loose, then we go to AP. All right, A1 slashes B1, flag down. B2 then slashes A2, stopping the play. How are we going to enforce that? Who wants to take a crack at it? And let's say these, these were these were regular slashes, right? Nothing like on the right side. Nothing exceeding. We got simultaneous fouls. All right, so now we're reporting to the table. And how how are we going to enforce this? So I want to know who's gonna serve and who's gonna get possession for the restart. One serves, B2 serves. Okay, so A1 slash B1, we had a flag down, right? So at this point, B, Team B has possession of the ball, right? While Team B has possession of the ball, B2 then slashes A2. So we kill it, right? Both guys are going to serve one minute. A1 and B2 are going to serve one minute because they're serving the same amount of time. Who does possession go to? It goes to whoever had possession when we killed it. Right? So that would be team B who had possession. Team B will get the restart. And is it non-release? Non uh, because they're simultaneous, because opposing players are starting to serve their penalties at the same time, always non-releasable. Non-releasable for the, for the amount of time that they're serving together. So in this case, they're both serving one minute. The whole one minute is yeah. non-releasable. But if one serving three minutes and one serving one minute, it's just the one minute that's not releasable, and the three minutes, the other two minutes can be released. Yes, but it's rare that you'll give a three minute that's releasable. That's correct. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So so if they were, so if they would normally be a one minute and a three minute releasable foul, yeah, the first minute since they're serving them simultaneously will be non-releasable. Yeah. yeah. Good point. All right. So there we go. Who gets the ball where? 
Team B, Team B, okay, and here, here's another important thing, all right, because we had two flags down. Um, team B is awarded the ball. We covered that. But where do they get the ball? Usually when we have a flag down, the team that gets the ball, it's a free clear, right? Right. But if we've got two flags down for simultaneous foul where they're serving the same amount of time, it's not a free clear. It's where where the ball was when the whistle was blown. Okay. Unless it's inside the box. Yeah, unless it's the attacking team inside the box, then we're going to push them out laterally 20 yards. Right down the street. Gee, no. Love that. During the live ball, B1 cross checks A1. Flag down. <laughs> I hear you guys. I hear you. I hear you guys. I hear you guys. Coach, I wasn't talking to you. I wasn't talking to you. B1 cross checks A1, flag down. B2, so another player on the team who just fought, who just committed a foul, then slashes A1. A1's. It was getting a little beat up here. Second flag down, right? A still have team A still has possession of the ball. So even though we've got two flags down, play still goes on. Now A2, the regulator, comes in, slashes B2. Now we have to kill it, right? Because the team with possession has now committed a foul. So now we kill it. So now we've got a situation here where we've got simultaneous fouls. We've got three fouls committed by three different players. Uh, on opposing teams. Okay. Uh, who wants to take a crack at how this is going to be enforced? Verona. All right. Uh, so B1, B2, and A2 are all three going to serve uh, the same amount of time, uh, all non releasable, all slashes. Now, because B, uh, the B team serves more penalty time cumulatively, I'm not sure if that's what it is, but I think that's what it is, then A1, then A will restart the ball. Exactly. We're going to play this time. Exactly. All right. Fair. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. Uh, so B1, B2, and A2 are all going to serve one minute, right, for their personal fouls. Um, now, these would normally be not releasable, but because they're opposing players and they're all starting their penalties at the same time, did I say non releasable? These would normally be releasable. But because they're opposing players starting their penalties at the same time, they're going to be non releasable. <coughs> They're all serving one minute, so the entire minute will be non-releasable. Now the question is, who gets possession of the ball? And like Matt explained so nicely, um, the total cumulative time from Team B is two minutes. From Team A, it's only one minute. So because Team A is serving less cumulative time, Team A will get possession of the ball. Free yeah. clear. Yeah. Okay. Ten seconds. A scored. Yeah. Yeah. Non-releasable. It's non-releasable. So they're all still. All three are non-releasable. And there will be no face there. Uh, uh, because really, yeah, because it's uneven. Well, because it's uneven. Come, 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 come. Because they're waiting. No, no, if, if they score a goal, he said 10 seconds late. 10 seconds after we restart. Yes. Yeah. So he said 10 seconds after we restart, we they score a goal. It's not releasable, so they all stay in. Now we go to pace. It's still got 50 seconds. It'll be a game. It'll be a game now. We got to cover the dead ball situation really fast, and then we're good to go. Yeah. Next. All right. Simultaneous fouls. Like I said, all non releasable. Next. Team A gets the ball. Next. Hey, stop. Where it was. All right. Next one. B1 pushes A1. Play on. So we've got a loose ball situation. While the ball is loose, A2 goes offside. All right, so we've got a technical and then a technical by the other team. What's the ruling? Cody has hand up. Oh, I was just doing that. Oh, play on. All right. So right when A2 goes offside, we got to kill it because that is a technical foul. And then no penalty time to serve. These are just technical fouls. Um, team A was fouled first, right? So they're entitled possession of the ball. So once they commit the technical foul, we kill it, and we give them the ball that they're entitled to. At the spot where it was when the whistle was blown. All right. I like to open the whole tree. All right, so uh, dead ball foul. 
Um, dead ball. Next. B1 slashes. If A1 slashes, then they both serve because they're both personal fouls. Um, if A1 commits a conduct foul, this is all during a dead ball, right? Uh, if A1 commits a conduct foul, then B1 will serve, A1 will not. But because A1 committed the conduct foul, that's a uh, change of possession. Um, if B1 has a conduct foul during a dead ball, and then A1 delays the game, we have no, I think I should say no penalty time, uh, because they're both technical fouls, right? Correct. Okay. I'm waiting for a point here. Oh, this is the offense, and this is this is who gets the ball. Oh, I'm sorry. all right. I missed that. All right, blue slash goes to red. Red personal foul. I'm just going to talk about these in terms of personal foul versus technical foul, right? Blue personal foul goes to red. Red personal foul goes to blue. Blue personal foul goes to red. Red personal. All right. So these are just. If a team commits a personal foul, the ball is going to go to the other team. Seems easy now. Wait till you're in. Yes. Presenting in front of class. I hear you coming. Are you starting to slide in the edge? Some of these things escape me. I, like, what does it mean? Live ball, leave it. Mag ball, dead center. After the whistle blows, suspending play with team A entitled to possession, B1 slashes A1. A1 then retaliates and slashes B1. What is the ruling? Okay, these are not actually simultaneous, right? Because there's a sequence involved. Right? They'll serve simultaneously, um, but but because they happen in this sequence, B committed a personal foul first, and then A committed a personal foul second. So when B committed their foul, A was entitled to the ball, but then A committed a foul. That gave B the ball back. Right? All right. So they both serve non-releasable penalties um, because they're starting their penalties at the same time. Who gets the ball and where? Team B one step over the midline on their offensive half. All right. Clock stop with team A entitled to possession in their defensive half. All right. B1 argues with the official during a dead ball. B, so B is, or team A is entitled possession. B1 argues with the official, conduct foul is called. The team A awarded possession at center X. He went to argue with the official. Conduct foul is called. If team A is entitled possession, B1 argues with the official. That's a flag down. Right? And then team A is awarded possession at center X. Then it's a technical, but it still goes to the center. Oh, and then during the same dead ball, then team A delays the game. So now what are we doing? So, the, so in, in terms of possession, because these didn't happen simultaneously, they happened one after another, the last one is going to determine who gets possession. So since Team A committed that last foul, Team B will get possession. Um, but because Team A was entitled to possession, and B1 committed a conduct foul, B1 should be serving 30 seconds. Oh. We agree that Team B gets the ball because Team A committed that last foul. Um, but I think there's a mistake here in terms of. White? I think this might be wrong. Oh, no penalty time for A. Yeah, no, no penalty time for A, that's for sure. No, because A was entitled possession. Conduct foul is a technical foul. Right? He committed a technical foul while Team A was entitled possession. But it says in my defensive half. So it's dead ball though, right? Oh, if they're talking about the end of a quarter, 
then we're going to stop. All right, let's move on. <laughs> I, I think we'll make mistakes, mistake. by the way. Yeah. All right, B1 pushes A1 with possession during a live ball. With possession, <laughs> right? During a live ball, we have a flag down. After the play is stopped, A1 then delays the game. Okay, so after the flag is stopped, now it's not going to be a simultaneous foul, right? This is, this is a dead ball foul. So we know that B1 has to be penalized for, because we threw a flag down, right? Um, but after the play is stopped, A1 delays the game. So since A1 committed the last foul, they've turned the ball over to Team B. Right? They're not simultaneous. Live ball push, dead ball delay of game. So B1 serves his 30 seconds, right, for the live ball push. A1 will not serve, but he did turn over the ball. These trees. Let's, uh, we can skip this one. Yeah. All right. I, this is, yeah. Communication, communication, communication. Just to touch on that really quick. So when you have multiple, when you guys have multiple penalties happening, yeah, uh, big game especially, you're going to have, you know, you're going to come together as a crew. Okay. Whatever, the, try, try to tell your crew chief whatever you have. As a crew chief, try not to speak. Okay, so if Steve has a penalty, he's going to come, he's going to say slash 32. And then, you know, Pat has a different player, blue 30, 34, uh, with a, a body check. Okay, so as a crew chief, let them speak to you, and you guys don't try to, arc, like, ask each other what you guys have. Just say what you have to one person, and that guy can then try to figure out what, how we're going to, you know, adjudicate the penalties. Um, but communication is very crucial. Um, on, on sometimes things get confusing when you start asking questions. You know, if Steve has a penalty and I started asking him, hey, Steve, did you have a cross check on 31 or a slash? And then by the time I get to Pat, Pat is going to be all, he's going to be questioning like what he has because he's thinking about, well, no, there's no way with a cross check, which is a slash. Now things get all confusing. So whoever has the penalty, just stick with what you have, come to the crew chief, crew chief will deliver, and deliver all the penalties together. Uh, I think we just have one more slide, which is a question here coming up. Okay. Another, another, another point on that. Um, when you come together, keep the communication between the three of you. Keep it verbal. All right. No big gestures like I have slash. You know. Keep it. You know. Keep it between the three of you or two of you, whatever the case may be, until you agree on. On what the penalties are going to be, right? Once you've got that agreement, once you've got that taken care of, then go and report it. But don't, as you're walking together, I had a slash. You know, you got to talk it out first. Whenever there's multiple flags on the field, talk it out before you start letting the whole world know what what you think you saw. Okay. Don't assume you're communication, saying. communication, communication. All right. Oh, sorry. Thanks. This is last minute. I'm gonna go to that website. Oh. Oh. Oh, that 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 closed the whole slideshow. I got it back up. Yes. <coughs> Sir, what website we got connected? Oh, is there a link on there? Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. It was on that last slide. Uh, did you get it? Was, uh, yeah. There it is. All right, that will do for us for now. Go to this, go to this website. I didn't find it. I got to do it myself. All right. Go to, it's probably some kind of a survey thing or something. Yeah. Can you pull it up on the browser? Right here? Uh, oh, wait, there was a it's O C A L. Oh, as well as a sign sheet for the Of course, it won't do yeah. it. No, it's going to go to my I'm taking a picture because it's making like this. Yeah. You 
Nice. Yeah, I stole it from Patrick's. Is there anyone on it yet? Yep. 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 Yeah, it's working. Do a survey? Yeah. Oh. Oh.